You don't have to participate, Max. Walter, you have to participate, though. Come on, let's see the jazz hands. Jazz hands. We are live. I hope you got your big girl panties on. Live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. I'm Hank Strange. This is the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. I believe this is number 89. 89. 89 tonight. That's a lot. Yeah, 89. Yeah, we've 89 of these bad boys. And uh, welcome to everyone out there. Our special guest tonight is this gentleman right here, Matt. From Never Enough Ammo. What What's up, on? man? No, not What's much, up, man. It's not a beautiful Friday night. Absolutely. It's it's a little chilly here in Gainesville, but I like it like that. Uh, where are you at? Uh, Brownsville, Texas. All oh. the way down south. Brownsville. So how's that? So it's a... It's it's a cool like... 75. <laughs> that's, that's, that's cool for down here. Yeah, no, that is. <laughs> that is, you know. But it's, it's not humid, right? Uh, it's always humid. That's the, oh well. That's okay. the brown on the, the water. Man. You you never oh, don't you end go. up with swamp ass. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We've also got Walt, Walter Keller from Safety Harbor Firearms joining us. Um, Patrick Roberts of the Firearm Rack, formerly of TFB TV, he's going to be jumping here in here at some point. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Matt says he's down to talk about anything. So um, all everyone who's hanging out with us here, if you guys have questions for Matt of Never Enough Ammo, let us know. There's lots of stuff going on in the news. We weren't able to do it last night because Lola and I were at the, uh, what is it, the 15th annual Ronald Reagan Black Tie and Blue Jeans Barbecue in, in Gainesville, well, technically in Newberry, Florida, but that's on the border of Gainesville. So was, uh, that was my first time going to a political type event. I don't know if any of you guys have ever done that. No, I haven't. Oh, okay. Not officially. Uh, so, yeah. So like this is like a fundraiser type of thing. I know, you know, we we've we've done some different things out there. But this is a fundraiser type of thing. Had Ted Yoho. Okay, he's a uh Florida State congressman. We had Keith Perry that's a uh the um this in the state Senate, uh Janine Pirro who's on uh Fox. Judge Jane. Uh, Judge yeah, Janine. Judge Janine was there. Um, who else do we have? Nick Adams. He's an author. You know, I guess he's like Trump's favorite author or something like that. But he's always he's he's always on Fox. He's um, the Australian guy. If any of you guys look at Fox, who comes on there, so he's a pretty cool, dude. And we also had Angry American. Angry American. Yeah, the author Angry American. So that was cool. I'll talk about that and other stuff. Uh, before we get into everything that we're going to do, let me shout out everyone who's here in the chat hanging out with us real quick. If you guys don't mind, Real Cujo was number one tonight. What's up, Real Cujo? He's a big supporter of the Hank Strange situation, so what's up to him? Efrain Rodriguez, what's going on? Gorillas and Guns, Yak Yacker 94 and let me see, The Archangel in there let's see who else uh chris bullis what's going on chris vanessa kitty dan nugent also in there greg 98k chris b shout out to chris b dc2 mega boost i don't know if you recognize any of these names matt because i'm sure oh, yeah. that they yes yeah, so, uh, quite a few of them Absolutely, yeah, because they're always like, oh, when are you going to have never enough ammo on? So we, we do roll call at the beginning of all our podcasts, so I sit there and I just go through the room and try and call out as many names as I possibly can for the first, yeah. like, 90 seconds. Yeah, it's a good thing to do. I think, you know, folks enjoy that. They're supporting us, man. There's actually some people crazy enough to listen to our nonsense. Oh, yeah. So here we go. Amazingly Lola. enough, but, you know, yeah. there it is. <laughs> yeah, Lola just gave me a sheet of paper. Jordan Poole, Tango Hunter, Andrew Cox, Recall Junkie. Chris B, Chris Bullis, who I mentioned, Peter Hinkle, Richard Hughes. There you go. Um, I don't know. There's probably a lot more. If I missed you guys, just let me know, and I will, um, you know, just do like roll call or something in there. Or shout me out, Mister Some Gums, Mister Tommy Boy Nine, Justin E. That's who I see that just came in. Just came in here. Kentucky Firearms Network. Never enough is in the chat. Also, so is Walter. So, you know, thanks to everyone hanging out with us there and everyone who's watching. I want to remind you guys, click the thumbs up. Come on, click it. Oh, share fine. this share yeah. this video with your family and friends. Let everyone know that we have never enough ammo on the podcast. He's here. He's ready. He's fired up. <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're not, I don't know. You don't look fired up. but man, I'm good to go, man. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. always up for a podcast. That's, that's my addiction right there. 
Yeah. How I, I know you do you do the uh, you do the thing with um, Yankee Marshall like what was that like every other week every other Thursday yeah we okay. do the uh, shooting left of center me and uh, uh, and most of the time gun websites is on there too oh, okay um, he, he misses a few here and there but mm -hmm. yeah so we're, we do that every other Thursday on Yankees channel. Oh, okay. And then, and so, okay. And then do you also do something with G web separately or? Well, G's got, I mean, he, he pretty much, he's on every podcast you can possibly imagine. I've got my own podcast, which is just the guns and geeks podcast. And we do a Monday and a Wednesday night podcast every week. Okay. And then I also do like a Sunday morning Q and a where I just sit there and talk to the audience just back and forth, just me and them. Um, the other two are basically round tables and I'll get anywhere from, you know, five to 10 people in a room on those Monday and Wednesday nights. Okay. And, uh, Wednesdays we talk about politics and guns and all that kind of stuff. And Monday nights we, we do the geek stuff. So we talk about movies and TV shows and whatever else that everybody oh, likes sweet. to talk about yeah. when we take a break from all the crap coming down on us all the time as gun owners. Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea, man. Cause we're, we're not just like single sided, you know, we're multi dimensional, right? Yep, we're we're like onions. We mm -hmm. got layers, and we taste terrible. Uh, I guess, man. I've never heard that before. <laughs> so yeah, so you guys talk about movies and stuff like that. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And what time is that? Uh, we go on at eight central on Mondays and on on Wednesday nights. Eight yeah. central. Okay. And the, the Monday podcast actually evolved specifically out of uh, The Walking Dead. It was one of those shows that we all got around in season one. And, uh, uh, you know, we decided, uh, well, let's do an after show podcast for this. And we started that. That was, what, seven years ago? And so it just kind of stuck. And now we just do it every week instead of just uh, just after Walking Dead. Okay. Just the Walking Dead's still on? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's still on, man. It's, it's still Walking on. Dead. Yeah, I remember when it's the, gonna, well, I understand be, that. It's going to be a zombie TV show. Yeah, for I remember when the <laughs> zombie craze started. Everything was zombie. Every, every, everything oh, was yeah. zombie. So, but I, I didn't know if it was... It's not so much anymore, but yeah. yeah. Well, it's still it's still running, and then it's on Netflix. All right, it'll be there forever. Yeah. Yes, and then it'll you know, it'll be like um, what do they call it? Syndication and all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it already hit its hundredth episode, so it's, oh, wow. it's ready to go for that. So they're going to be okay. making money for the rest of their lives. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's on now, and then there's going to be well, there's already a spinoff, right? Yeah, and it sucks. It's horrible. Don't <laughs> yeah. want it. I've never looked at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, but I would like to see. There's a whole bunch of other things those guys should tackle. I think, like that production company. But you know, I guess right now they're they're making the getting the easy money. Then they'll go for the other stuff. I don't know yeah. if I shout uh, if I shouted out Recall Junkie 1981. He said he clicked thumbs up. Thank you to everyone who's clicking thumbs up. Uh, Wida Wida Hosu in Finland says what's up to us. Uh, yeah, I saw that. How's the weather in Finland? What's the temps in Finland yeah. right now? Uh, yeah, that's gotta be. I'm gonna guess it's minus 100. No, it's not that cold. <laughs> and yeah. we've never, and uh, we've never had anyone from Finland. I'm assuming that's because of never enough ammo being in the house with us tonight. <laughs> yeah. That's so we got we got to thank him for that one. He uh, came to the dark side. <laughs> yeah, Neil Kuby. I, I think I'm reading Lola's handwriting. Her 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 handwriting is atrocious. Oh, Load up 480. Yeah. Rod Mills is in the house. Justin E. Paul Just Hibbert. Biker Bob and Zippy ninety eight plus two silks. Yeah, so your handwriting is terrible. It's terrible. Pharmacist writing. What it's do you terrible. Want from me? Terrible. Huh? It's pharmacist writing. What do you want from me? Yeah, if that's how you guys write people's prescriptions, I'm surprised <laughs> more people are dead. Yeah. Hey, each other's handwriting. We know what we're saying. Oh, it's like a secret code. It is a secret code that only oh. they can read. Well, that's right. Okay. Was she a Shriner or something? She like yeah. a Mason or something or Freemason yeah, or what? Pharmacist. <laughs> Pharmacist handwriting is terrible, man. Terrible. I can tell you that right now. So that's cool. Looks like we've got Patrick R in here. I think he's setting up and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, our special guest tonight is Matt of Never Enough Ammo. Matt, you want to tell my audience who, you know, for those few people out there who have never heard of you, um, you know, who you are, what you do, sir. I am just another asshole on YouTube. Who started making videos <laughs> in the corner of my dining room back That's in 2010? <laughs> and after a few months, I started realizing people actually, for whatever strange reason, um, you know, cared about what I said, and uh, it just kind of spun off of that. Um, I started on YouTube just because I thought it was pretty cool that you know I, I always hated forums. 
I always hated all the gun forums because I hate having to type out a paragraph every time you want to say something to somebody. Yeah. So yeah. When YouTube came along and I actually talk, took notice of it in, in 2009 that, oh, hey, people, you just put up a video saying something and then somebody else can put up a video responding to it or type in a comment or whatever. It was an easier way to do basically what people used to do back in the forum days. Uh, you know, the forums are still around, of course. But um, and so I just kind of hopped on it and have a lot of friends locally to me that like to talk about guns and politics. And every time I would start talking about politics, they just kind of go, oh, God, shut up. They recoil, <laughs> they recoil back in the car. Yeah. So it was really cool to find a place where people like to talk about that stuff. And then it just kind of snowballed into what it has become and everything. And so, you know, I mm -hmm. still am still the same douchebag that just sits around and talks to a camera most of the time. And, you know, there it is. That's Yeah. No, I think that's a true story for most of us, right? I think, uh, first of all, someone has to make that T-shirt. I'm just another asshole on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, see? There you go. <laughs> so that's real. I don't know if you uh, – do you do two sh the T-shirt thing like uh, Yankee I Marshall have a, uh, a Spreadshirt um, link. That it's on okay. it's on my uh, my Facebook and everything, and I have, I sell some shirts here and there. That just you know, say never enough ammo, or I have one that some people buy that says never enough, never enough ammo says go fuck yourself because I have a series of videos where I do where I tell people to go fuck themselves if they did something stupid. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know if I can cuss on this, but I assume I can. Yeah, you can absolutely. Well, it's okay. too late now, but you, yes, you can I'm absolutely. Now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and yeah, I, I mean, I don't get real hardcore into it. Not only did it because I had so many people saying, please do a Never Enough Ammo shirt so I can buy one. And the easy way for me to do it was to go to Spreadshirt because they basically, they do all the work, you know. Right. You 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 pay them. They, 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 they Of course, they take most of the money. <laughs> you know what I mean? They did, yeah. you know. And then yeah. I, I just try and sell them. And then, I don't know, they're like 18 bucks or something like that, whatever they are mm -hmm. over there and. the so yeah, I've got I've got the T-shirts, and I've been meaning to do patches. I've been trying to get with gun websites and do some patches because he does a lot of patches and stuff. And mm -hmm. so little stuff. I'm real bad at the at the promotional side of things, at the marketing myself side of things. I'm just right. I'm 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 just not good at it. So yeah. Well, you know, we all have our things that that we do. I mean, and nowadays, really, to to do anything on social media, you have to use all the other social medias, and you have to get good whether you like it or not. You know. At, yeah. uh, at, at doing all this stuff, right? Because you're like a one man entity most of the times. You know, some people have teams. My team consists of me and Lola when she feels like it. <laughs> yeah. So you know how that goes. Yeah. Walter's okay. Walter's also part of the team. I know he's gonna. Walter's gonna get a little we jealous. We yeah. get teams. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know. I've got other, t we've got other things out there too. You know, the people, the folks, like all the folks watching us now and listening, those guys help out. You know, it really, that's really what it is. You have to create, I look at it, at it as kind of like an engine and you have to create this engine and there has to be all these parts. You don't necessarily know what everyone's doing, but you know, as you build, as people start to identify with you, cause I think that's what happens, right? People like you, they're like, oh, I like that guy. I like how he talks, sound of his voice or you know, the way he talks about politics or this thing or that thing. And, you know, that engine is what really pushes everything forward. So, yeah. Yeah. And I also hate the forums, by the way. I don't know if yeah, anyone I just, else. I never, never could get into the forums. It was just, it was yeah. such a slow way to communicate back and forth. And then you sit there waiting for an email to come in to see if somebody responded to you like two days later. It's just, yeah, yeah it was it's a lot of reading plan. because you put up, you post a question, then someone, when they, when they respond to your question, they copy the question that you did. Then the next person copies your question and what the guy copied yep. and it just goes on and on. And it's totally insane. Yeah. But really? I bet you, I bet you go ahead. No, I was say real quick. I just want to say hi to my troll out there. Nathan Griffin. He, he's, oh. he's, he loves to troll me. So hi. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He's my current favorite troll. Oh, shout out. I've, to I've, had, I've had many. But he, he, <laughs> yeah. He's so he likes Nathan the, he wins the uh, troll award <laughs> but for this week. I've had better ones in the past. He's trying hard. God bless him. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's really yeah. trying to he he really wants to get under my skin. So he's been trying uh, for the last couple of weeks to really trying to nail it down. He hadn't got it yet. But yeah, I want to give him kudos for trying. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it. You are loved, sir. Should we say what Nathan uh, said in the comments? Oh, you can say whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. He says terrible marketing rallies. <laughs> laugh, yeah. out, laugh out loud. Terrible yeah. at marketing rallies. Yeah. He I'm was just putting in the terrible. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, he likes the. He, he likes the, he he somehow he got a, a, a his panties in a bunch when I said I wanted to do some state capital rallies and 
But he just, I think he got pissed off. He first showed up after I made the James Yeager video. And so I think he's a Yeager fanboy, and that's where it started. Because I had never seen or heard from him. He'd never been in any of the chats before that point. And then all of a okay. sudden, he starts showing up and trolling me. So I think okay. he's just a, he's a Jaeger fanboy that doesn't like that. I called Jaeger out on something that I thought was bullshit. Right. So I think that's where it comes from. Cause I'd never seen him before then, but okay. So let's unpack those two things. You know, obviously uh, we do have, we do have Patrick here, which, and Walter, you guys should feel free to jump in here anytime that you guys want to. But since Matt's talking about uh, one, the rallies, which I think, uh, you know, I know when you were doing all the rally stuff, we already had things going on and we went out yep. of town, so we didn't get a chance. We did we did talk about them and we posted up some stuff, but we should talk about that. And then to the Jaeger thing. So let's start with the rallies. What was that all about? How did it go down? So, um, well, the rallies were basically just, um, I, I, I can't remember, we were, me and Yankee and everybody, we were talking about just everything going on with the NRA and everything just going on, just all the drama and all the BS. And I decided to make a video and just challenge people to get up on, on November 5th and just go to your state capitol and just be a good example of a gun owner and be a little proactive instead of reactive about everything. That's really all it was. It was as simple as that. Um, and before I knew it, I had people calling me from national radio shows having me on for interviews. I had, you know, people wanting to be a part of it. I honestly didn't expect much of it. Um, and some states did really well. Some states didn't have any, anybody show up. I think once, I think Tennessee had like three people show up, you know, but, uh, you know, all I could do was Texas. That's really all I could do. So I was trying to get people out there in different states to do what I was going to do in Texas. And it was really just, all it was, was to try and get people up off their asses, get out from behind their keyboards once in a while and just go out and be seen a little bit. Cause I think, you know, especially when you got situations where you got these Antifa jokers running around all over the place and they can manage to get up and get riled up at the drop of a hat. You know, we should be able to do the same thing. They're and, paid. um, and it was, it was, it was, it was cool. Uh, yeah. we had about 50 people here in Texas. Uh, I heard, you know, in Michigan and Arkansas, there was tons of people showing up in different States did well. Yes. Apparently Maryland was a, was a, all kinds of people. They had gotten a whole bunch of different groups and, yeah. um, Nebraska. So Patrick, Patrick R is in Texas. Um, you, you said you're in Southern Texas, right, Matt? Where are you at? In Brownsville. Texas? Brownsville. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Where are you at, Patrick? In Texas? Do you uh, divulge? In Fort Worth. In Fort, Fort Worth. Worth. Oh, yeah, okay. Fort Worth. Okay. So I'm born and raised in Dallas. So. Yeah. So Brownsville. where's the where's Wrong the side of town. <laughs> <laughs> what's the state capital of Texas? It's in Austin. Austin. In Austin. Yep. Okay. So all right. So you all went to Austin then, right? Yeah. We went to Austin and we uh, were they had news coverage and uh, did some interviews with the some of the stations down there and we had the uh, the uh, the I forget what her title is officially for the uh, Texas State Rifle Association was there. Open Carry Texas was there. Um, you know, it was good. Uh, we we were out there for about an hour. Uh, I did most of the talking because I, I had three people drop out who were going to give speeches, but I had some other people come up. I had Michael Cargill, who's a pro gun radio show host in Austin, come out and speak, and um, and then we all sat around for about an hour and a half after the rally, just there at the Capitol, just shooting the shit, talking, yeah. changing phone numbers, getting to know each other. Then we all went out to lunch afterwards, and okay. uh, it was it was a good rally. It was a lot of fun. So, um, um, yeah. you know, there's a couple of things I wanted to ask about it. One, why did you choose? Okay, Walter's getting like his meals delivered. <laughs> Congratulations, Walter. Very nice. Thank you, Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna eat, don't forget to uh, mute. For, you yeah, know. I will. I will. I will. Because the rest yeah. of us, we get hunger pains when we hear you. You hear me eating. smacking? Yeah, yeah. We start getting hungry, and you know, our significant oh. others don't bring us food like that. So, well, whatevs. But yeah. So, uh, did you consider it successful? And and um, really, the thing is, why did you guys choose November fifth? And you know, like, why such a short time? Um, I, it was just a it was a random day. It, it, well, first of all, the, the November fifth always sticks out to me and a lot of the people um, in in the circles I swim in on on YouTube because it's it's National Buy Ammo Day, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just a day we always get together and we, you know, we always encourage each other online to go out and buy ammo day, go support your local gun shop, go buy ammo on, on the fifth. And, um, so. Okay. Again, I never I knew it. about that. We were like thinking it had something to do with, uh, Guy Fox. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that, that, yeah, that, that, that was actually originally, um, I think that was why, um, national buy ammo day ended up being on the fifth. Okay. I think had something to do with that. It was Haas USMC that started National Buy Ammo Day like five years ago. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, back, I think, yeah, it was, yeah, it was in 2012. And and I think he, back originally, he said it had something to do with that and, and, that, and whatever else. That wasn't, you know, I mean, 
that wasn't what, why I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I just thought, hey, maybe it's National Buy Ammo Day. Let's let's do a little more than that. And it was short notice. And honestly, I did, like I said, I didn't I didn't expect anything from, but other people kind of latched onto it. It's cool. And like I said from the beginning, if if you know, in the very first video I post about it, if it's if it's just me and a sign standing there, then that's what it'll be. Um, right. Because I plan to get up off my ass and, and drive to my state capital on that day. And um, you know, I didn't really have any expectations from it, but it um, so it, it would have been. I, you know, I ran into some challenges here and there once people started to latch on to it and then it was a matter of, Oh, well, if people are really wanting to do this, well then let's try and get some of the bigger pro gun organizations and some of the bigger YouTubers on board. And, and some did and some didn't, you know? Okay. So, um, so did the media yeah. show up? Did you, yeah. you guys? And yeah, stuff? I had, okay. yeah, we had, we had, I had three different news stations there. I had two different newspapers. Um, and then some other media that they were saying they were, me, I don't know. Um, I did a couple of interviews with some of the local stations there. Um, I did four radio interviews. Two of them were national radio. Um, and, uh, I was on the blaze radio network. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think clearly we can call that a success, um, at least for you in Texas. And then there's a bunch of other States out there. I mean, ultimately we're not trying to force anyone to do anything. Oh no, it was just, like yeah. I said, it was just, it was just a challenge to try to see if people would get out there and plenty of people did, yeah. you know, it, I mean, it would, I would love to have had thousands of people at every capital, but you know, that's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, especially I, I, I know my place as well, right? Like I'm not Hickok. I'm not some huge ass channel. I got like 80 something thousand subscribers. You know, the I, fact think, that, I think that's, that's pretty freaking big. Well, yeah, I mean, the fact that anybody showed up, I was happy about. Yeah. So I yeah. thought it, it went well for it went well for me. I had a blast. Um, you know, I took my son. I got I even randomly ran into uh, Adam Kokesh, who's running for president in Austin. When I was there, I stayed there for the weekend, and and I ended up doing an interview with him in his RV on the side of the road. Um, you know, for why he's running for president in 2020 against Gary Johnson for the Libertarian Party. So it was a great weekend all together, you know. Yeah. It, uh, you know, we had fun at the rally. Got to see a lot of a lot of my subscribers and a lot of fellow gun owners from around Texas, and even a couple that weren't from Texas, but they happened to be in Texas, so they came to came to Austin, and uh, I, I had a blast. I thought it was fun. Okay, cool. Do you guys uh, have uh, Walter? I know Walter was trying to say something about uh, when you mentioned Antifa. Walter was trying to say all the Antifa people show up because they're paid. I can. How you, I can. How I are you going to get there if you don't own a vehicle? <laughs> yeah. I I would say if 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 I, what was it? It was the day before. Um, it was November fourth, the day of day of rage or whatever they were going to do the right. day before our rally, which I, I I had never really considered when we set the date, but. Um, if they're being paid, they're doing a crappy job because that was a horrible turnout. In fact, I, I, they were doing it in Austin the day before. I followed them around with my camera because I was there the day before, and there was literally like 10 people walking around. There was more people from Open Carry, Texas. There was more Oath Keepers, and there was more bicycle cops than there were actual Antifa protesters. Yeah. So that Antifa revolution never went down. It didn't. It, nothing happened. <laughs> it, was, it was a bunch of kids who you know, got yeah. their mommies to pay right. for their, <laughs> their gas money to get there and come back. Or, you know, Bloomberg or Soros or whoever. Uh, Patrick R., did you want to interject something here? No, just the French fries are delicious. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry, man. I haven't had dinner yet. Yeah, so I know that in part of this thing with the rally, I know because I, I saw you sent an email to us about the whole rally and everyone like yeah. getting behind and helping sharing it. Um, I don't know if you want to expand on that, but I think that one of the things that's happening here, and, and it's the reason why I wanted to have this platform, is that lots of folks out there think that the whole like gun community, or specifically the, those of us who are gun guys on YouTube or in social media, we all get along. That's not necessarily the case. No, you I mean, know, there's, we, there's some yeah. people that genuinely hate each other on YouTube that I've found. Um, right. I, think most, I think most people just have people that they like and people they don't, and most people don't get you know, but heard about it. I mean, there's certainly people I definitely get along with on YouTube and, and people who it's not so much that I've run into too many people that I don't get along with. Um, usually the people that I, I, I would anticipate I wouldn't get along with probably don't talk to me anyway. So we never get a chance to actually right. find out if, if we would or wouldn't get along. So, yeah. um, yeah. you know, it's, it, it, I mean, you know, a different personality. It's like, it's like real life It's different personalities. The biggest issue I have with, with the whole online YouTube drama thing is, people take it so personally in way, I mean, you know, again, I, I'll, I'll tell people to 
you know, go fuck off or whatever and, or call people out on their bullshit. But it's the same thing I would do to some of my best friends in real life. You know, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've, but, I've, but I've some people don't it. see that, you know, like they, they don't and they get yeah. instantly butt hurt about it. And it's like, yeah, well, but, do you, I, I would, but do you understand why? Like some folks, you know, it's like how some people don't curse or some people wouldn't make a video saying, fuck you, so and so, you know, yeah. some people just don't do that. No, and no. even though to you, like, I understand the marketing aspect of it. You know, but but some people don't do that even for the marketing and 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 some people just really take that seriously. Like those are fighting words. Oh, I know. I, I, I absolutely know. Yeah, no, it's it's and I've, I've been doing it since I've been on YouTube. I mean, I, I'm not okay. I'm not shy from saying what I think about whoever, you mm -hmm. know, or whatever, whatever topic, um, you know, I mean, me and me and Yankee have gotten into it more times than than I have with anybody else. I mean, we've literally yelled and screamed at each other in these podcasts and told each other to go fuck off. I've had him leave my podcast pissed off at me because we got into it so bad. But the next night, we're back together on the podcast, and he's a very, very good friend of mine on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Wait, is, you know? is he, are you the guy that uh, chose the candy, the favorite candy that's not a candy, or is that uh, the G Webs? The favorite Wait, what? He was talking the other day about uh, like uh, some argument he got into about candy. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was that was G Webs. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that was G -Webs, yeah. So do you think that do you think that any of this? Um, I don't know if it was hate or whatever that was coming your way, but the cold shoulder that you felt you were getting from the community had to do with. Um, I know you you did a fuck you video, but you, yours was to Jaeger, which we're going to talk about in a yeah. second. But obviously, you do stuff with Yankee Marshall, and Yankee Marshall did a like a fuck everybody video. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I even I, I mean I'll be honest with you, I contacted well because first of all, I mean I, you know I, I I did not have the problems that Yankee had with people. Right. Like I, I got my own problems with people and stuff that they do, whatever. And, and if, you know, people are, I'm not, I didn't get into all that. I mean, you know, it's on the podcast. It is what it is. Um, but I mean, you know, like I I sent an email to Eric about the rallies and, you know, and, and told him straight up, like, just so you know, I'm a good friend of Yankees. So I'm, but I'm inviting you to do something in your home state if you want to. Cool. And, um, he got, he told me to give him his number to give me, he said, give me, give me your number and I'll call you. And he never called me, but so I don't know how he feels, but I mean, I got nothing against Eric. Um, you know, Yankee got a, got a, got a little, <laughs> his panties in a bunch about it and that's fine. Um, you know, I, I understand why Yankee, why Yankee got mad. I, I can, I can see the situation with that. It wasn't my fight to get into, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I don't really have a stake in it. Um, I have never had a problem with Eric or anything like that and what he does with his channel. Um, so I don't know what it was exactly that set Yankee off, you know, um, but apparently it was, you know, it was one of those things because I was on one side of it, seeing what was going on. It was funny. It was like a little thing here and a little thing there that bounced back and forth yeah. and back and forth. And before you know it, both of them are just like raging on each other. And yeah. I think it started with something simple that, uh, Eric just said on that, um, what was it? What podcast was it? We were watching the, the, the round table. The, uh, whatever the round table. Table. Yeah, whatever it was. I think Eric said something that I didn't even hear him say, but Yankee heard him say it. And then he says something about it. But of course he says something about it while we're on that podcast, which more people were watching the podcast we were on than we're watching their podcast. So more people heard what Yankee said about Eric than what Eric actually yeah. said. And I don't if, think, I and think, I don't think Eric said anything wrong. I think maybe I, I don't remember see. Eric saying anything wrong. Yeah, I, I honestly do not. Now his his friend, I don't know his name, was saying yeah. some stuff that I found was disturbing for somebody who's supposed to be pro Second Amendment. But I did not hear Eric say anything that caught me off guard. I thought Eric did really good in that round table, right along with Mr. Guns and Gear and obviously with, with yeah. Tim. But Tim I think Chad was, Chad was having like a, was trying to make a for instance argument, right? Because a lot of people, I've got friends that in the gun community that say to me, you know, well, would you do this in this situation? Would you, and, and I think Chad was trying to have that kind of a conversation. But it, to me, when I listened to it and what I heard, Chad wasn't supporting that. He was saying that if these guys really, truly just wanted this one thing no. and that's all they wanted, well, maybe that doesn't really matter. That wouldn't make a difference anyway, but that's not what they want. They don't just want one thing. And and if you look at, like, for example, um, in the news today, right, you've got, um, you know, the Democrats in Congress, they've put out some new... Oh yeah, they, yeah, they sold out new gun, gun they control. Dusted off again like they always yeah. do. And I mean, and that. I think in yeah. what they put out, it would even make... Um, it, what is this? Uh, here, here we go. 
I think this is on the truth about guns. Democrats' new assault weapons bill would ban the Glock 17 and more semi-auto pistols. Yeah. I mean, because they said basically if there's a if there's a pistol that someone makes a semi-auto version, then all versions of that pistol should go into a ban category. I mean, it means somebody that makes an auto version. Not a yeah, so it's not an auto so, version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So if you've got like the Glock 18 or what is it, 18C, then that means whatever the the semi-auto version of that, that should also be, you know, that should also be banned. So that, yeah, they're gonna put everything in there. So I think he was trying to make that point. But what happened? Um, I don't know who had the higher numbers or whatever. But I think because you guys were doing kind of like a counter protest. That whole thing got lost because I've known Chad and Eric for a long time, and I, I don't – neither one of those guys want to negotiate with Democrats or liberals or give up anything. You know, I, well, I don't think anybody was saying that they were. I, like I said, I, just from what I heard, I had heard Chad say some things about giving and, – and, and again, I may have caught it out of context, but I just heard him saying some things about giving, giving bump fire stocks and that kind of thing and what, what, what difference would that make and why would that matter. Nobody cares about that stuff and whatever. And like I said, I didn't even – say anything about it like i was like ah oh, until uh later on then when they were asking well who said what and what and you know or, yeah why and everything and then we we're everybody's trying to remember who said what and all i could remember was that well tim did great <laughs> mr guns and gear didn't get much time to talk but whenever he did he did great i didn't have a problem with eric but it was all the industry guys that i had a problem with um you know, talking about oh, I didn't get into this business for blood money and all kinds of other crap. And and I mean, yeah. you guys can the, we, the we, blood we, money thing set me. I didn't like that I, either. I, I mean, know. If, if, if there was if you're a gun, if you're a, if you have a business that sells guns and you feel like if um, there's a mass murderer, a mass murder goes down. In my opinion, that's on the person who committed it and not the thing that they use to commit that mass murder. Now, if you feel like you sell guns or you sell a car or you sell anything that someone uses to do that, you feel like it's blood money, get the fuck out of the business. Yeah. Don't do it. You know, yeah. but it's not. In my opinion, it's not blood. These are inanimate things that we animate. We take and we use them either for good or bad. Yeah. You know? So yes, that guy, I would be a hundred percent in anyone who felt like, yeah, that guy's off his yeah. fucking. And, and it was a couple. And I'll be honest, I'd have to go back and watch the thing because this was mm -hmm. three weeks ago now. But, um, you know, I, I, there was it, it, it. There were things that were said, and again, it was for more of the industry guys, the guys that worked at the at at the, the you know, the the gun stores. And one guy worked for what was the one uh, the guy that works for that uh, CLP company. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Yes, he was right. stuff too, and it was those guys that I was just like I couldn't, you know, whatever. And then that just kind of snowballed into what became. I don't know how it even. I'll be honest with you, because I'm. I, I remember we were wanting them to get to the the issue with the NRA, which was supposed to be the point of the chat, and so that's what everybody in Yankees chat was railing about. And then when they finally did get to it, and then everything happened the way it did, and then. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember what. Yeah. Now, what in, the interest, anyway, but, in the interest of full disclosure, Rand CLP, which is what you're talking about, that company yeah, yeah. actually sponsors us right now at this moment. I don't know if they if they will continue to do so, but you know, we have had, um, we did have uh, 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 Chris from Rand CLP. You know, he was on, and um, you know, in a private chat that we had with him, and I think. You know, I'm not trying to defend him. We gave him the opportunity to come on here if he wanted to and defend those particular things that happened. And he, and I guess, you know, he chose not to do it. No, but, I, I don't want to say anything. But, I mean, if you've watched yeah. the stuff, you know my, my issues with the stuff he was saying. Yeah. You know, it, it was – so I don't want to get into it on your podcast. Yeah. I don't want to cause any problems for anything. But No, it's not that. I'm not worried about that. I think that that whole thing is just, you know, I think it got out of hand. Um, you know, maybe it's settling down now. I think – that and then subsequent things, you know. I think after that, Yankee went a little. Uh, he went a little new. Oh, he went. He went. Yeah, like I said, that's that's why I said it, go, it went back and forth. It was this little disagreement on these little things here and yeah. there, which got bigger and bigger. Because then, as I guess, Eric I, and I didn't see it. I, I guess mm -hmm. Eric said something or did something on Facebook talking about, um, you know, how he supports gun rights over the NRA or anything when then Yankee was like, well, wait a minute. I heard you say that you're paid by the NRA and go back and forth and everything. I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not going to pretend to know. I'm not going to pretend to know anything about that. Yankee did all that on his own and, and that yeah. um, I'm, I'm, you know, 
I understand why he was upset if there's an issue where somebody's saying, oh, well, I support this 100%, but then at the same time going, yeah, well, you can kind of buy my opinion if he's saying that to somebody else. I don't know that he is. Yeah, I, 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 know, don't, I, don't, I don't. I'm not trying to really at pay. all. But yeah, I I don't believe that um, he's paid by the NRA. I think there there are people obviously who are paid by the NRA. Yeah. But I'm and I'm not trying to relitigate everything. I think no, one no. of the things that's going on here. There's lots of different cliques, and 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 being a clique is not a bad thing, right? Maybe guys came up together. You know, they're from the same time frame of trying to build this thing. So you have people in different generations of trying to do the YouTube slash social media thing, but you do have lots of different clicks and things like that going on. Yep. You have oh, lots yeah. of people, you know, Yankee Marshall doesn't go on other people's stuff. We've been inviting him since we started doing this and where this is episode 89 right here. You know, he still hasn't come on the show and lots of that goes back and forth. To be honest with you, I've invited um, the guys from Iraq veteran to come on the show and they haven't come on either. Yeah. You know, but so but maybe they're all they're all like in a different thing and they're having their little East Coast, West Coast war. And maybe we don't <laughs> merit, you know, we're not like big enough or whatever. There's there's a lot of stuff like that that goes on in this whole thing that we do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was just touching on the fact that I know when you when you decided to do this event, you feel you felt like you didn't have like the, the full support of the community. And I never felt like that was from that. I, I never got the feeling that that was from that in any way. Um, you know, if, if anything, it's just because who's going to, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sending emails to people who have, you know, over a million subscribers, you know, they, there's a chance maybe they run across a couple of my videos from time to time and may know who I am, but overall they're not going to care. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, so like what, I said, so what did you think this was all from then? What the, the, the fact that the, the folks in the community didn't get out there as much as you thought well, they would. I, and and, I, and, I, I, and I, said this, I said this before, and one, I'll say that one person changed their tune, one person didn't. The first two people I contacted, and then some other people, a lot of people just didn't respond. Um, and then dealing with some of the, the organizations, too. The, a lot of the response was, well, I said a lot. I'm, I'm exaggerating there. I, at least two people basically said, we don't think it's good for our branding. And if we didn't start it, we're not going to be a part of it. They didn't want to promote it because it wasn't their idea. Mm, okay. So I'm not going to yeah. say who those people were because one of them ended up turning around and, and doing it yeah. and going, okay, okay, okay. We want to be a part of this. Yeah. So, I think that's not cool. If you don't want to do something, say, Hey, I don't want to do it. You know? Um, yeah. and well, you know what? Maybe it is cool. If you, if, if, if what you feel is like, Hey, it wasn't my idea. So I'm not doing it. I mean, they were honest at least. Yeah. Yeah, at least you know how they think now. You know I what mean, I mean? I mean, I can respect that. If somebody I mean, says it's not good for my brand and they don't want to do it, then they don't want to do it. Fine. Yeah, yeah I so, mean, it, I mean it, it, sometimes those things turn, sometimes, not all the time, turn into like kind of a freak show, somebody's protest. You know, the flags start popping up, and next thing you know, it's like, whoa. whoa wait yeah. a second. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, and, and that was that was the whole point was to get people on board and just spread the word. And, and you know. It was kind it, of it was, short notice, too, for the for the most part, I thought, a little bit. But. Well, I mean, you, I, you, and you, that, think, and no you think that, but you think that, but imagine if the top five YouTube channels on YouTube gun, gun channels all made one three minute video when I first asked them. We're, we're talking about people that collectively have millions and millions of subscribers. Yeah. I mean, you know I, mean? Think, if, I, I if think some of those guys, to, some of those remember, guys felt like. Remember, a lot of those subscribers are sitting in a mud hut somewhere. So um, well, yeah. well, they're not, I, I, they're not well, all over here in the U.S. either. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that may be true. But you know what? I think um, from the from like the vibes I got out there, I feel like some people fit, you know, had the opinion that it wasn't going to do anything, you know, that it wouldn't necessarily have an effect. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, you know, be, I, I know for me, it per like, if you want to know what my thing is and, and we did share it, we did talk about it here. Uh, Walter and I had already made plans to go to um, to to uh, Vegas for the SEMA show. You know, and, and, and it just came up really fast. I mean, I think if I have enough time to plan things and put things on my schedule, you know, then I would do it if I considered, hey, this is valid. If I, th if I didn't think it was valid, then I wouldn't even talk about it at all. Yeah. I think everything's valid. I think all I ideas are valid, you know, un unless it's just something that's just totally destructive to what we want to do as gun guys. Yeah. And I don't see how that would be. Yeah. And, and like I said, and it's, you know, when I sent you the email about it, I mean, the, the idea was pretty simple to just be proactive and be good examples of gun owners in the public eye. And, right. and I don't think we spend enough time doing that. 
Because usually the only time we get out there to rally about anything is when we're pissed off and we're threatened. And yeah. that's when you have the, the protest. And this was supposed to be a rally, not a protest. And we've done it before in 2013. You know, we got, we got thousands of people all over the country to go out to their, their capitals. I, I just think that these are the types of things we should make, we should do more regularly instead yeah. of wait. You know, if, if, if yeah. we had a yearly rally at the state capitol just to go out there and again, just be a good example of a gun owner. Don't be the nut job that shows up in camo and a boonie hat with an AR. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go out there and, and, and open up the <clears throat> well, conversation. Well, also, you know what? Uh, I've heard this from G-Webs and he's asked me about this. And um, I think we need to organize better. And I know G-Webs is trying to organize us oh, better. Yeah. But when I've spoken to G-Webs about it, I've told him, like, it's really the same conversation that we're having. Sometimes what happens here is there's lots of different egos or there's different factions fighting with different people. There's people, for example, there's people in the gun community that have, like, actively tried to blacklist me because I wouldn't do what they wanted me to do. Oh yeah, I've been you there. know, and I'm not gonna fucking work <laughs> with those people no matter what. If someone's out there trying to block me from do, like I don't. If you don't agree with what I do, that's all well and good. But if you actively go out there and then tell all the people don't deal with this guy, well then fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna deal with you. Um, even it, you know, even though what people are trying to do, and I think what G Webs was trying to do was get us to all get together for the for the greater good. You know, I'm not, I don't want to roll with someone who I know is my enemy. And so you have to, you know, f from that reason, I understand why some people in the gun community do feel that the way they do. I'm sure the fans out there would like us to just all get over our shit and deal with each other. But if anyone out there, if you know someone's your enemy, you're not going to roll with them. I'm, especially in an emergency situation, which is what I think we're in, I'm not rolling with someone who I know could put a bullet in the back of my head. No. And I guess there are those people out there. I've never run into anybody that I am that vehemently or that I have that much of a problem with. You know what I mean? Like nobody, nobody's wronged me that much so far on so far. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. You yeah. Know, so, I mean, you know, I've, I've always tried to keep it open. I have people, you know, I have people that I, that I have issues with. Actually, I, I don't have people that I have issues with. You know, there, there, are, very, there are very few, very few in the gun community on YouTube. Most, if I just don't like their stuff, I just don't like their stuff. It has nothing to do with them personally. And, yeah. and even and even some people, I may not like something that you did, but that doesn't mean I have something against you. And that's where Jaeger falls in. I got nothing against Jaeger, but he did something I thought was pretty stupid, and I yeah. called him out on it. The same as I would do to any of my friends. The same as I've done to yeah. G. I can't, I can't really argue with you on the Jaeger thing. I know we promised to talk about that, so we can. Yeah. But let me do this really quick first. Um, where does Yankee Marshall live? Uh, he's up there. Uh, he's in, he in Washington. Tennessee? Oh, um, he's in, yeah, he's in Washington, I believe. He's right there on the, yeah, the, 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 the line between Oregon Seattle. and Washington. Oh, oh. So okay. I think he's on the Washington side. That says right a lot. There. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. All right. So he's in Seattle. Did he go to his uh, state house and get out there and rally and all that stuff? No, actually, he uh, he 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 had the uh, some stomach flu or some shit. I don't know. Oh, okay. That's from all the fucking. <laughs> all the gangbangs and bukkake things he's getting involved in gave him a yeah, well he's a, he's a big now fan he's, of, of now he's, now he's, Wait, gonna, now he's never, come, with this? He's oh, never coming on now he's never no, it's, it, no 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 the more you talk about his affinity for midget tranny hookers the more likely he is to come on yeah yeah so. absolutely so really quick because i want to i want to uh i want to go on to some other things so let's touch on the jaeger thing really quick Right, because oh, yeah. we promised to talk about that. Oh, yeah. um, I watched a video on Jaeger. I don't have any kind of argument against the video. So you tell us what happened with the video. Well, I mean, it's real simple. Look, I, I, I've, I've watched some of Jaeger stuff in the past. Um, he's, I've never been subscribed to him. Um, I just, I'm I, not my kind of content. You know what I mean? There's just some channels I have nothing against them, but I just don't watch them. Like, like Hickok. I don't watch Hickok. Nothing against Hickok, but it's just, um, I don't like watching just people shoot gongs in their backyard it's not fun for me you know mm -hmm. um so and i've even made video i made videos uh, back in 2013 when jaeger did that whole i'm gonna start shooting people thing i made a video defending him because i watched the video after it became a big deal and i was like well look in context you know what he meant you know he wasn't being literal calm down people right yeah but anyway so i i never, I never really watched jaeger but but apparently he had got into it with this whole bump fire stock nra thing 
And I hadn't really been paying attention. I knew I was very dissatisfied with what the NRA had done with their statement, with the timeline of events. You know, they make a statement. Three days later, we get a bill sponsored by nine Republicans who all of a sudden have the balls to sponsor an anti-gun bill. Well, that wouldn't have happened had the NRA been doing their job and putting proper political pressure on those Republicans. So I felt that the end of the NRA dropped the ball when they made that statement about bump fire stocks. Um, but that, 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 you know, no big deal. It is what it is. I hadn't done any videos on it or anything. I mean, we talked about it privately, you know, me and Yankee and G webs and stuff like that, but it, it was yeah. what it was. I disagreed. I, I rarely agree with everything the NRA does. Right. Yeah. But I've, I've always kind of seen them as a, as a necessary evil, even though I'm, I'm much bigger fan of the gun owners associations. But anyway, so I'm on Facebook one day, one of my subscribers sends me Jaeger's video and says, have you seen this Jaeger video? I'm like, well, no, I'm not subscribed to him. I, I don't know. And he sends it to me and says, check this out. And it's this video of Jaeger defending the NRA and saying that anybody that questioned the NRA's tactics or that questioned his defense of the NRA is a traitor to this country and our gun rights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I had a problem with that because as I, was, I didn't see member, that video, I saw another video where he said he was a genius, but go ahead. Well, as, 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 as an NRA member, Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, I have a right to question the NRA's tactics, as we all do if you're an NRA member, because yeah. we pay them to do a job. Mm -hmm. And I don't need some dude, I'm, I'm a traitor because I question their tactics, so I called him out on his bullshit. Yeah, and again, I that's, that's nothing personal we against him. Call, we can't call each other traitors, I mean, unless, you know, like that's a, that, those are fighting words, and that's a serious accusation yeah. to make against someone to call them a traitor. You I know, mean, um, go ahead. I, th I think his line was, for all you people out there saying the NRA were traitors and all this stuff, you're the traitors. You're the ones that are turning your back on the Second Amendment in this country. And like He went off on that rant. That was his, mm -hmm. his spiel. And I was like, no, dude, you got to calm down because that's not right. They yeah. are upset because they care so much about their gun rights. They're upset because they are patriotic Americans. That's why they care enough to get to the NRA when the NRA makes a statement like that. Yeah, I think there's lots of things going on here. The NRA made the statement. I saw Jaeger came out and a few other, there's a few other people that came out and said that that was like a, a genius move. Very quickly, you could see it wasn't a genius move. And then the the NRA, like Chris um, Chris Cox and, um, what the hell is it? his name escaping me right now? LaPierre? LaPierre, yeah, yeah. You know, they were doubling down. Oh, yeah. stuff. Like they were saying they support the machine gun ban and all that kind of thing. And I think that's where it was, you know, that's what was wrong. And that's what really upset people and set people off. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's, and it's one of those things. Look, I know who the NRA is. Okay. And anybody that had the NRA, they were hand in hand with Reagan on the 86 ban. All right. They were hand in hand on the Brady bill. They practically wrote the they 94. Admitted that, they were admitting that during this yeah. time. And that's why people so, were calling so we them have, traitors because they were yeah, admitting this is it. Why, this is why reiterating people, that. Yeah. This is why people like myself, when they make a stupid statement like that, we go, uh-huh, see, you're doing it yeah. again. And we, tar we try to call them out on it because it's our job as members to call them out on it. That's what we do. You know, yeah. and Jaeger was making it seem like if we did that, we're traitors. And not only that, we should just sit back and shut up and just keep paying them money even when they do something we don't like. Yeah. So now here's the thing, like my personal my personal relationship with Jaeger, I, I, I've I obviously talked to him. There's videos where he's in my videos, I'm in his videos and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we don't communicate anymore. You know, I'm Jaeger is one of those people who try to blacklist me and shut me down. <laughs> to be honest with you. And people don't really know that. The reason for that, I don't talk about it a lot, but I think it's important in this context. You know, the reason for that is because um, I met Jaeger literally at the same moment that, um, you know, that I that I met my friend uh, Reed Henricks of Valor Ridge. I met them literally at the same moment. So when Reed split off and went his own way and started his training thing, I uh, I went I decided to go out there and train with him and there's lots of guys that he said hey come out here and do stuff with me and just like we're talking about right now in the community there's lots of people who were afraid to get on Jaeger's bad side or whatever and didn't do it for that reason and I went out there and I did stuff with him because I'm my own man I'm gonna go do what I want to do but because of that Jaeger and everyone else in his clique decided oh we're gonna like freeze this guy out anyone who does and 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 for people who know this they saw that they said anyone who deals with Reed they're all gonna go after that person right 
or they're going to try to shut that person out of things. So I was involved in that whole thing. I know what that is. So, you know, honestly, when you see people like Jaeger out there talking about people who are traitors or who are not loyal, I could tell you for a fact that he's a traitor. He's not loyal to people. He's a fucked up person. You know, yeah. and I'm I'm never going to ever support him again. Obviously, he's in videos that I've done. I've done things with him. I've spent a lot of time not talking about this. This happened like two years ago. But this is this is a lot of the inside stuff that people out there in the world who are looking at what we're doing. They don't understand that. You know, they don't understand how really fucked up these people are that you're dealing with. You know, they don't understand that guys like Jaeger, they don't even. You know, they don't even talk to any company, any firearms company, unless they pay them. They won't even talk to you. They don't realize all that. So when you get someone like him who's saying that, oh, no, the, the NRA are geniuses and what they're doing, when we all know that they made a mistake, the NRA knows they made a mistake, and he's doubling down on it and then going after the rest of us who are here for the Second Amendment. Of course, we're all trying to, you know, if you're doing this full time, we're all trying to make a living, make money out of this. But still, you're a man. You're responsible for your own honor, you know. But you're, so this guy's getting out there and just telling us, "No, you're wrong. You should you should go with the NRA instead of standing up to them and telling them that they're making a mistake." That's where I have a problem. To be honest with you, I have a problem with for with Colin Noir for not getting out there and saying these guys are messing up because he doubled down on it. He said that they're that they're doing you know 3D next level chess, and we don't understand it. I, and he, and we know for a fact he works for the NRA, right? That he but gets paid for them. But he I, but he could get out there and say and say, look, guys, I know I work for you. I know we're out there doing these things, but I'm telling you that this is wrong. Yeah, I mean, even if he wasn't going to do it publicly, I, I can only hope that behind the scenes he was going, hey, you guys fucked up. Y'all need to fix this. I hope because I, him, I can at least understand he is legitimately he is a a paid spokesman for the NRA. Like we know that's his job. I can understand why he doesn't. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that Jaeger is also paid by the NRA. Well, see, that's, that's and we also, we also the don't... video that he did with, uh, with Chris Cox, right? That's not a yeah. typical Jaeger video. No, it's not. No, it if you look not. at that video, yeah, yeah, you no, can tell it's, it's produced. Yeah. yeah. Go yeah. Ahead, Patrick. The, difference between, the difference between the two is, uh, you know, Jaeger is really covert about it. Whereas, uh, Colian's really overt about being yes. paid so I yeah, as, I at least respect Colin Noir yeah, because exactly. he admits it. He's like, okay, this is what I do. This is who I am. I'm I'm getting paid by them. I am I am a spokesman for them. Jaeger, if he is or isn't, whatever, it seems like he is. I don't know. I have no proof. Um, I've heard rumors from people that know him, probably some of the same people you know that we uh, all know. Well, Jaeger um, doesn't talk to anyone unless they pay him. I'm just telling you that right now. Yeah, so I don't I've give heard, a shit. I don't care what what that starts. <laughs> I know that might start some things for some people. But we all know that, and that's a yeah. fact. Well, that, and if, if you look at that video things. he made, you can see anyone who looks at Jaeger's videos knows that's not a Jaeger video. Yeah. Okay, that video is edited. It has multiple cameras. It's a whole different thing. So that should tell you something right there. And I'm not knocking it. I, I don't have any problem with the NRA or anyone paying anyone to do anything. I have a problem with people who don't disclose it, and that's one place that I 100% agree with Yankee Marshall but this is, you know, ultimately, like I said, we're all responsible, I think, for our own honor, right? So I'm not going to tell another person what to do, and I'm going to do what I what I do. But when that person is out there trying to front like they're, you know, so super honorable and they're some kind of superhero or whatever, and then other people are out there buying it, it makes me shake my head because it's all bullshit and it's all fake. And, and I think there's a lot of people out there that don't realize that. Yeah. No. No, there are. Yeah. There's, there's so, a, there, there is definitely there is a, a background here. There's an underground. There's a behind the scenes thing going on when it comes to the gun channels. I, I, for the most part, try to stay out of it. I don't like dealing with the BS. I like, I like going to gun channels. I like hanging out with G Webs and Yankee and the people that we hang out with on the podcast. And I like to just make it as fun and and you know as possible. You know, but there's always going to be that that kind of yeah. drama. Yeah, so. absolutely. Okay, so you know what? I think we we caused enough trouble there for for a minute, <laughs> for a couple of minutes. We could sidetrack. We're leaving our other two guests out of this. Uh, before I go to them, though, I just want to mention Scott Kimball. Um, uh, he he just donated five bucks to us here in the chat. Scott, thank you. And I think Scott wanted to know if you were considering making your event that you did like a yearly event. Yes, absolutely. I still have the page up. The page is not dated. It's uh, just it's two a uh, capital rally 
two a, a, two a, yeah, two a capital rally is okay. the Facebook page. And I, I would, like I said, I want to make out there and being in the public eye a much more common thing. So, okay. Okay, cool. So, okay. We do have Patrick R here, Patrick. Yeah. Um, we, you're formerly, I, I mentioned this because you're formerly of TFB TV. Now you were on a couple of weeks ago and we didn't really dig into this. I don't know if it was like fully out there. I think we talked about it a little bit, but what's been going on with you and your career? You know, um, <laughs> what's up, man? <laughs> I, it was a dry fire practice, man. Yeah. Uh, I figure you guys can talk and I can do some dry fire practice. Um, well, my career, it, it's it's a thing, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> kind of branched off, did my own YouTube channel. Uh, we are now at uh, about 10,200 subscribers, exactly. Right. So, And what uh, is your YouTube channel? Weeks. We put a link in the description, yeah. but just for folks out there that want to find you. Um, and yeah. apparently, yeah, uh, well, it's Firearm Rack. Uh, apparently, I didn't put that in the little thing here because I'm dumb. No, it says uh, Patrick at the firearm rack. Uh, yeah, well, that'd be the website that's not done yet. Yeah. Okay. That's a, okay. There you go. So if so, if folks are looking for you on YouTube, if they search for the firearms rack, they can or the firearm singular, right? Yes, singular. Yeah, firearm rack. They can find you on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And what kind of stuff are you getting into? <laughs> what kind of? Uh, so we're gonna be doing like longer term testing of things. Uh, the first gun. What I did is I gave everyone a choice. Uh, they got to vote on what we did for the first gun uh, between a Arsenal Firearms Strike One, a FN five hundred nine, and a CZ P ten C. And the P ten C won out. So we're going to put uh, five thousand rounds through this gun. And as things break, like that front sight that became damaged, they'll get replaced with something. Okay, that, and, uh, that broke at what number of rounds? I uh, like 340 something. Okay. It's, okay. it's not really broken, it's just kind of uh, Is it like bent flat? and disformed. Oh. Okay, yeah. And so how long do you think it's gonna take for you to put 5,000 rounds through this thing? Uh, approximately five weeks. Okay. You know, I know not everyone could do that. That's why I'm asking you. You know, that takes some serious commitment. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's 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 kind of a hell mary. We'll see if it works. I think people are going to care about what something's going to do over five thousand rounds. Uh, so why I picked five thousand rounds? It's about ten years worth of use for the average person. Uh, on average, whether we like to admit it or not, shooters are going to put about 500 rounds through a gun uh, in a year. So if we can go ahead and simulate 10 years of use over the course of about five weeks, that should tell a lot of people a lot more about what they're buying than whatever talking head is saying after you know a few hours with a gun. Yeah. I think it's a good thing, and, and it's by no means an easy feat for you to do. I'm sure it costs you some money. I don't That's know how. Ammo. Yeah, lots of ammo. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've gotten someone to help you, like with the funding of the ammo, or if you're looking for folks I to. Help yes, you. Okay. I am. Yeah, uh, I am absolutely looking for ammo sponsors currently because uh, five thousand rounds per gun. Like, I, I don't really have the ability to drop a grand a gun at it. You know. Yeah. Right. So, are you gonna um, do like the Patreon thing? Is there a way that folks Probably, maybe that are listening yeah. to this can help you out with that? Uh, not yet. So, my whole thing with that is I don't really feel like I've earned the Patreon thing quite yet. Okay. And uh, until I feel like I've earned it, I'm not gonna put anything out there asking for help or anything like that because I just don't think it's right. Okay. All right. No, I understand that. One thing I could tell you guys about Patrick, or one thing I like about him, he's got his his principles, he sticks to it. I respect that. That's why I think he's a good guy to do this kind of stuff. I think if you're if you're looking for data on guns, if you're coming to YouTube to find out stuff about guns, there's lots of different kinds of data out there that you can get. And you know, um, I think it's a good idea for you to do things the way that you're doing it and kind of like go off the beaten path of what, because guys like me, you know, we get the gun, we put some ammo through it. I'm like, mm, that's what I think about it. You know, shoot it some more. <laughs> yeah. 
So, um, you know, so right now, what can people do? Oh, listen, by the way, let me um, let me make some comments here. Sorry, I, guys, on that. Yeah, uh, let me yeah. see. I, th I think there's a couple of comments in here that um, I wanted to read that people are saying about. Uh, I think it was Joe Carpenter says he puts his uh, he puts his gun on his wife's chest. Does that make it a firearms rack? Firearm Absolutely. Rack. I, I yeah. mean, you know, it could be. There's your new logo. logo. <laughs> there is your new logo right there. Yeah, like some uh, nice stool. Be one one vote for that one. one vote yes, for I vote. vote. I, right, there you go. I third that. <laughs> Gotta have fun while you're shooting. Come yeah, on. do you have a logo? I see you have some kind of logo in your thing here. Is yeah. that your logo? What is that? It's, oh, okay. it's that's a rack. rotary rack, right? It's, it's, it's a rotary rack, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, at first glance, it looks like a musical instrument. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, cool. it, could, it, it can be, depending on, I guess. Yeah, I think you need some maybe? boobies in there. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I think that's you a know, good idea. That is deal. something that I never really wrap my head around is like the need to interject uh, scantily clad women into gun stuff. So, like, I get it. It's nice to look at, I guess. But I just really, I, I will I be with you right there. Serious. I'll be with you right there because I have actually legitimately unsubscribed to several channels over the years because all of a sudden their girlfriend shows up in one video. Everybody watches that one video and then their entire channel turns into watch my girlfriend shoot this gun. Um, and they completely just lose everything that I gave a crap about with their channel. Yeah. But I still so, like the idea of, of Well, okay, so that's a, that's a good thing. That's a good topic I think we could talk about for a second. So do you guys think that if, if a chick well, is cute and she's got a nice body, she, she's, she's either not allowed to show her body or she's not allowed to have a YouTube gun channel? No, not at all. I yeah, mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm more part two. I hope everybody out there that uh, you know wants to go stand in a bikini and shoot a gun should be able to do it, and I hope they're very, very successful. What I'm saying is that is not why I watch YouTube gun videos. If okay, that's, that's what your not what you want to see, yeah. if, that, if that's what your channel is going to turn into, which I've seen channels do this, then I'm going to lose interest. Because look, let's be honest, if I just I mean, they're, they're, porn is free out there nowadays. I don't know if anybody knows this. So if you just want to go <laughs> look at chicks, there's plenty of places to go do it. When I come to YouTube to watch gun videos, I want to, I want to, I want to know about the gun. I want to, I want to, or the politics or whatever it is we're focusing on in that video. That's the content I'm going there for not to watch your girlfriend shoot in Daisy Dukes and a tank top. That's not why I subscribe to your channel. You know what I mean? Like that's, I, it, there's a place for it and there's plenty of people that like it. So go, you do, you have fun. I'm yeah. just saying that I, that's when I move on from your that's, channel. That's not what you want to see. Okay. What were you going to say about it, Patrick? No, I, I, I was just, uh, I didn't realize that porn was free now. I'll, I'll give you some yeah, links. But it's the, not the good. It's not the good porn. The, the, the best <laughs> porn is the a la carte porn. See, I'm, I, I know something about porn, so I'm not gonna let that one go. Uh, the best. You know, porn I feel like this is gonna be the episode that we're gonna watch Hank get tased by Lola. <laughs> <laughs> is Lola not here? Because I don't. Oh, she is here. <laughs> okay. I thought I saw her get up and leave a second ago. This is tame. Uh, <laughs> this is real well, tame. Okay, let yeah. me just get this out though. Let me just get this out. The best porn, this a la carte porn. You can literally, there's like, there's porn producers and porn stars, and you you call them up or you email in your requests, and they make videos of your requests. Now that's the best porn. I'm just saying, yeah. You know, but there is the free porn. <laughs> so on um, so this. <laughs> So in this episode of uh, Who Moved My Freedom podcast, I give you the best tips on porn. Uh, somebody talks about some politics stuff. Uh, Patrick eats onion rings, and uh, Walter gets food delivered. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, it's not right. like a win. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, music Lover wants to know, Patrick, how did the site break on that? Uh... I, oh, and it fell okay. off the table. Oh, it fell off the table. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, accidental uh, like, falling off. You didn't go bang it with a hammer. No, no, no not yet. Not yet. No, it's, it's not a sig. <laughs> not yet. No, not yet. No, that's gonna happen. Actually, actually, you can laugh about falling off a table, but if it does break that easy, uh, it's they're aluminum sites. I mean, even though if it does something that simple by a simple fall, and it's it's not that good anyway. Yeah. So. so I mean, the sites are aluminum on this. Do they even sound different? Like it's it's strange how they sound, um, but I've got some Dawson Precision sites coming, and uh, they'll get replaced this next week, I think. 
I've got to say, a lot of people were complaining about stuff like the mag release being a little bit stiff on these and the slide release being a bit stiff on them. And uh, I guess over an afternoon of shooting it, it really loosened up quite a lot. I'm quite pleased with it so far. Now, this failure right here, which I don't even know if I can like mimic anymore, I think is hugely overblown. Okay. Like, so the whole thing is is the striker I'm trying to. I think it's locked on you, Hank. No, I locked it on you. Okay, I then yeah. my computer is broken. Um, so the whole thing is the striker assembly here. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be in line with with the center of the slide, and then whenever it clicks over like that. <laughs> Pop that out. You can see it kind of stops on okay. the back and it hangs up on the frame. Yeah. Now on, on mine, like a good whack in the back, like it's fine. But uh, yeah, I don't think that's a real failure. I know that's something that a lot of people have been asking about. Yeah. So crispy. There's lots of uh, just so everyone knows. There's lots of comments going on about porn. People are voicing who, do, who does not support porn. Someone says, you know, if you want porn, you can ask your wife for porn. I think. Well, you know, I don't want to say you get married so you could have a la carte porn, but if you got a good marriage going, there you go. That's like okay. you know, it's not free. Nothing in life is free. <laughs> yeah, still, no. It still costs you something. <laughs> uh, no. But um, go ahead. Cal um, L talking about cracks in the frame of P10s and a bunch of other issues. If he has like actual proof, I'd love to see that. Uh, you can email me at the little thing down here. Uh, but like I, I haven't seen anything about cracked frames or any nonsense like that. That sounds like internet bullshit to me. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure Patrick will be happy for you guys to send him that. You know. Because if it's legit, he would like to put it out there. Um, Chris B wants to, he says that you had a discussion on his video going about Jaeger and dropping your gun for training, asking about it. Well, yeah. So the whole idea behind the dropping your gun during training, like I totally get it. I understand where they're coming from. Um, mm -hmm. It makes sense, realistically. Mm -hmm. If you if you think about it, it makes sense. Uh, okay, that's super frozen. It is no, we can still we still see you. Oh yeah, no, uh, my my YouTube's is broken. Um, anyway, so the idea is to get you accustomed to the idea that it's just a tool. It's not something special. It's not anything other than a tool used to achieve a goal. Mm -hmm. So, and you'll see people say, "Well, man, they're expensive, though. I don't want to drop that." I don't really care if it's expensive. It's a tool. I, just because it's a really, really nice, uh, you know, hammer doesn't mean I don't need to use it like a hammer. Okay, I'm listening to you. All right, that's that's all I had to say. Okay, all right. I see that uh, there's someone in the chat, Paul Strauderman, that's trying to ask a question, but I don't really see his question. Just so you guys know, like, there's lots of people in this chat right now. And the like the it's just scrolling up like that. So I'm not seeing necessarily I'm not seeing everything that's coming through. Neither is Lola. So Paul, if you have a question, um Paul Strauderman, I want to say I, I, I don't think know he if was the one that was just asking over and over again to provide proof that, that Jaeger's paid off. Wow. I think I think that's the same. I, I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Yeah. But I thought that was the same yeah. name. Because somebody was asking. Yeah, I'm not. In the, I'm not going to get into the business of like uh, publishing. Uh, you know, all that other crap that went on out there. If you don't believe me, you don't believe me. It doesn't. I matter. wouldn't spend a lot of time wasting yeah. your time trying to figure out what other people are doing, because all that does is slow you down. But that yeah. wasn't a question. He you just says, "Show your proof." Yeah, yeah. It's not a question. Well, yeah, it's not a question, but it's a it's a statement that he's making. Um, and, and every time you mention his name, guess what? It's yeah. more attention for him. So. Yeah. Well, I don't care about that. I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, but it's yeah. what well, I'm just saying. People in general, worry about yeah. what you're doing and how you're getting your thing and how you're going forward. Not. Yeah. What well, I guess he's asking, like, uh, you know, why did I personally attack Jaeger? I'm just telling you guys the truth. If you don't believe me, don't believe me. I'm telling you what I know. I'm I'm in the, on the inside of the gun community. So are these other guys that are here, you know, and that's the reality of what goes on. 
the same stuff goes on yeah. with manufacturing. Yeah. Stuff That's too. the reality of what goes on. If you don't believe it, don't believe it. If you want to live in in a world where you believe whatever you want to believe, do that. I'm not going to get into the business of, uh, of trying to prove things to you. I know what I'm saying is true. So whether you discover that 10 seconds from now or 10 years from now doesn't mean shit to me. You know, the truth will always come out. I'm telling you that. People, all of these things that people are doing will come to light. That's the reason why, for example, for all the years that I've been doing my channel, I've been completely open about what I do. I've been completely open about it. There's some people that don't like me for that or some people that tell me don't do that or whatever. I don't care because for me, I know everything eventually comes out. So there you go. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm telling you something. If you don't believe me, that's your, you can, you can not believe me if you want to because someone else is telling you that they don't do something and you're believing that without any proof that they don't take money. <laughs> so if you're going to believe that they don't take money without proof, then, you know, it's up to you whether or not you believe what I'm saying. So he wanted to know why Matt attacked Jaeger at the end of his video. He wants to know why Matt attacked Jaeger. <laughs> yeah. his, no, Matt's whole video was like, fuck you, Jaeger. That's how we got into the conversation. If you don't know why I did it, I, 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 then you obviously didn't watch the video. And you yeah, obviously is this guy in the this gun community? Podcast. I mean, you did, we literally sat here and explained what Jaeger did. That made me want to tell him to go fuck himself. Like we've, I, it's in the video. We just explained it here as well. So I mean, if you're not, if you didn't get it, that that's why. I mean, I'm not gonna go through it again. So, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, but I know if you, if you, I'm gonna tell you something about me, and you could believe it or not believe it. I don't say shit lightly. So, I, but I also am not gonna get into the whole thing of going, oh, here's somebody's thing, or here's this person's thing, or that person's thing. All those things are out there. I don't have to go out there and start showing people stuff. I, I'm not really interested in that. And like I said, for a long time, something was that was done to me by all these different people, you know, and I didn't say shit about it. But the whole reason why I started doing this podcast and talking about these things was so that we can cover this stuff. You know, Matt's a guest here. I'm not trying to beat him up or, or, you know, or I'm not even trying to promote him. I'm trying to have him come on and we have a real discussion with you guys if you really want to know what's going on. And even though there may be some things that Matt or even Yankee Marshall said that you guys don't like, there's things that they said that's true. Maybe those, th two, those two things even cross, you know, and that's all stuff that we have to deal with and we have to get over and learn and, and you know, learn how to be adults about it. So... Um, what do you, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Lola's telling me to get back to Patrick. Move along. Patrick finish what he was saying. <laughs> Move along. Okay. Move along. I just wanted to make sure we address that because I'm in the business of doing this so that people, if people ask me questions, I will answer their questions. So go ahead. Uh, Patrick, did you have anything else on that? Okay. Patrick is shaking his head. <laughs> what, what? Uh, sorry. I'm, I'm like trying to watch this. Problems with the P10C video. Oh, whose video is it? Uh, I don't. I don't even. Earl Ann. I don't know who the hell he is. Uh, it, it's got like 623 views, mm -hmm. but like I'm looking at his his uh, video and like his gun's got less wear than mine does. Mm. And what problems was he having? I, I so so far he's saying that. The mag release in there. Let's see if I can break it down to where we can see it. Hold on, let me lock you. I'll lock you on. Okay. All right. So he's saying that how the magazine release operates inside there. Mm -hmm. it, it's got this piece that drags on the uh, the magazine body itself and leaves a little like mark right here. Mm -hmm. But like looking at my magazine and looking at the wear that I'm seeing on his, you know, <laughs> I, I think I might have seen more time in and out of a gun. He's reporting that they get stuck. Okay. So okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't gotten past that, but I it, it smells very suspect. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, uh, we're – 
you know, we're looking forward to what you come up with on that. When you're done with the with the uh, P10C, what are you going on? I know you're doing that because that's a very popular gun right now. I know stores can. No, 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 no. I, I wanted to do. I wanted to do the FN509. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, but folks, I folks voted vote. on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no. Uh, so, what was the question? Sorry, I don't mean to be a bad guest. Oh no, that's okay. Um, I see Razor JB said the P10C backplate is an it's issue. Not an issue. Okay. Um, Warsaw Patriot, what do I think of AK74 ammo trying being to be uh, to be more more produced in the states? Yeah, I would love to see that. You have to have plenty of demand for it. So yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know the the ratio of seventy four to six uh, forty seven. Yeah, yeah. But rifles is not that. There's not enough probably to justify it in the manufacturer's eyes. So. Yeah, I prefer the AK-74 guns myself. I have one. I have a bullpup version. And I which love the round. That's an excellent round for that type of weapon. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a couple things in there. One, I want to bring up. Walter has a new accessory that I want to talk about before we get back uh, to talking with Matt about stuff. So Walter, get that ready. And then right now, I want to uh, take that opportunity to remind you guys that of the Krebs custom raffle that's going on, right? Okay, Krebs is doing this uh, raffle where they're giving away a KV-13 Mod 2 and an A-Chaotic Suppressor from Liberty. And I think then there's another AK. Uh, we've, we're gonna post some stuff about this on social media. We've been talking about it. And you guys can look up. We had a video where uh, Mark Krebs was here. Well, next Tuesday, Mark Krebs is coming back on the show. And? And? Jim Fuller is also going to be on the show at the same time. And that's the first time the two have ever been together on a show at the same yeah. time. That's going to be history. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's going to be history. The well, only thing know, that will be it's going to be big doings Tuesday night in the ring. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the only thing that will be bigger is if we could resurrect Kalishnikov. <laughs> Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mikel, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and get him on the show at the same time. So that's happening next Tuesday. It's going to be, uh, it's going to start at 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to do a whole bunch of uh, promotion for that. So I just want to remind everyone. And for the Krebs, for the Krebs, if you just go search on Google Krebs Custom Raffle, you're going to come up with that. It's for a good cause. They're uh, collecting money for someone that was a loyal customer to uh, Krebs Custom for a long time, and then he fell on hard times. His wife got cancer, and they have a lot of medical bills and stuff like that. He had to sell all his guns to pay for stuff. So Mark and 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 a lot of other companies are out there trying to help this guy, and, and we're trying to help them as well raise that money. And they're selling um, raffle tickets, and you can win. Uh, there's two different guns you can win and some other accessories and things like that. So uh, don't forget to check that out, guys. Yes. That would be that would be something very cool. Now, Walter, what is this new okay. accessory? I'm locking it on you, sir. All right, everybody. Who? Uh, how many guys are CZ Scorpion Evo three fans out there? Everybody seems like everybody's got one of these yeah. things, or, yeah. or wants to have one of these. That things. one looks very familiar to me. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, um, because it's my well, stock. I dig that stock. Oh, All right. Well, that's the new product of ours. We're we making this collapsible stock for the gun. Also, aside from it being a real stock, which a lot of people shy from nowadays because of the the, the availability of availability of braces, and uh, we're also going to make this where it'll have a tail hook adapter on it, so you can have your brace and eat it too. Yeah, you can make it. A, you could. It could still be a pistol. Yes. And you can use can a I brace. Get a, a top shot of that, Walter. Yeah, uh, he wants to see from the top. There you go. So you have a button on the top. That button will close it. And you can push the button a little bit and go all the way open. Or you can you can do it. Seg it's There's four positions. So you can stop at the different positions if you like, too. So, oh, cool. Yeah. I'm trying, right to, up. I'm trying, to, trying to see how, how much standoff that has off the side. It looks like it's not too much. Yeah. It's and reasonably it's reasonably slim. Is that a QD? Oh, QD built? on both sides, correct. Both sides have QD nice. mounts. Um, okay. And what is it? What kind of aluminum is it made of? Um, sixty sixty one, okay. and um, it's going to be hard coat anodized when um for the final version. This right here has been seracoded because we got this together yesterday. I thought I was going to be on the podcast last night, but Hank wasn't on last night, so yeah, I forgot. Yeah, sixty sixty one seems like it's more than sufficient for that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. And the yeah, um, so, thank you. 
and the the guide rods are these are made from drill rod and the final versions they will be um, nitrided yeah so every, everything will be you know there won't be any any funny business going on when yeah so uh shellfish funchish <laughs> i'm getting that one wrong shellfish Funchess wants to know how much is it, Walter? How much is it going to be? Uh, we are running an introductory special. Um, we'll call them the first, the first one ninety nine for nine one ninety nine. So one hundred ninety nine. Okay, one hundred ninety nine. And just so all you guys know, full and disclosure. That's either, that's either as the full stock or with the with the tail, the tail hook. hook. Okay, uh, tail hook adapter. We don't have the tail hooks. Yeah, not the brace. Okay, and just so everyone knows, Safety Harbor does sponsor the Hank Strain situation. Yes. That's one of the ways that we make videos, not just for Safety Harbor Firearms, but we make that helps us make all the videos that we make. And there's lots of folks who, you know, like small companies and stuff like that, that want me to test things and do videos on things. I'm able to do that because Walter helps out, you know, financially as well as he comes here on the show and lets me beat him up from time to time. And then, yeah, and then when we go shooting, I bring cans of bullets. Yes, lots of ammo, lots of ammo. OK, so when is that going to be available? Um, probably this was the proto, the first one. Um, we got to start turning some more metal on the machine, so we're probably looking at about three weeks. Um, three weeks. Okay. We have the, the first group of them. So, are you you're not taking like pre-orders or anything? Yes, we are actually. You Matter are. of fact, okay. you are. If you want to order, pre-order it. We're taking your orders, taking your money. Um, you will get your stuff. I've never shorted anybody or screwed anybody, so and I have okay. no intentions of doing that. Yeah, but, so people want to know how you've been working on this, how you developed this whole thing. That's the KES stock, and you have several more of them, I know. Right, we have one for the SIG, MPX, MCX, and the one that works on the Rattler, too. Um, we do one for the AR-15, which was the first one we did. Um, yeah. This came about, I, I didn't do one for the, for the Evo originally because um, the design of the receiver had this, like, sling loop over here. I'll show yeah. you. So this one, because I have like one of the first ones that came out. Oh, yeah, go ahead. There? I just no, lost I'll, the screen. Hang on no, I've locked you on. Don't worry. We no, it's up on my end. I must have touched something or something. Oh, me, okay. I got the Rock Island Arsenal thing back up. Um, <laughs> originally, Sig, I mean, excuse me, not Sig. CZ had like a sling, plastic slim loop, sling loop over here. And in order to have the stock work properly, it would have been spaced off of there and then away from the receiver. And I didn't like that because it's just not the right way to do it. So this year at SHOT Show, um, SIG's newest model of this has no sling loop. So okay. being that, I said game on with the stock. Okay, and so what happens if someone wants to put this on there? I know that's mine that you have, right. and you guys modified it, but what happens if uh, like someone out there has the original one You have to put this on? You have to trim that, trim that sling loop off. Um, it's plastic. It cuts off, and I had it done in about five minutes. And, you know, okay, so you could do it with a Dremel or right. something like that. I tested the waters on some of the uh, CZ boards <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> well, Patrick's I was laughing about something. No, I, uh, I heard I heard Dremel. Uh, <laughs> oh, I use I use a bigger air tool in that, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm just, I'm just oh, wondering. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about Walter screwing it up. I'm worried about a customer saying, <laughs> well, "Oh yeah, they just use a Dremel." The, yeah. That's, Somebody's gonna have to do a video. <laughs> I was very cautious when I didn't because I didn't want to screw up Hank Strange's gun because I didn't want to have to buy him a new receiver. But nevertheless, it's easy to cut. It comes right off. Um, I test. I asked it a lot of people on some. I asked some people on different boards if they'd be willing to do that, and the guys were like, "Hell yeah, I'll cut that thing off. I don't use it." So um, okay. that's why I went ahead and I went ahead and did it. So yeah. So um, what do you guys think? What do you think about this, Matt? It's nice. It's really nice. Makes yeah, I, 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 I had that gun so I could get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, <laughs> save your shekels, as I say. <laughs> um, actually, what what the, what the popularity of the, of the Scorpion is is it's not too expensive, and it's not a Tech Nine. Okay, so it's it's in the middle, and it's it's affordable for a lot of yeah. people. It's in, a, it's in the range of an AR-15, basically. So, what is well, Patrick doing? Cleaning his keyboard. Yeah, he just, he's, yeah. Uh, we, we don't see something we're not supposed yeah, to. We got, we got comments that Patrick was watching porn over there, but it could be true. 
<laughs> I don't hear any machine guns going off and butts jiggling. So, you know, it's like. <laughs> well, he just said he does not watch that. So, okay. Which, okay. you know. Uh, yeah, to each his yeah. own. Everybody's got their own thing. Yeah, right? yeah. We can't knock him. What do you think about it, Patrick? <laughs> about, about I, think about, I think it's pretty awesome, man. Like, uh, I was looking at the the butt piece. Is it going to be rubberized or is it just going to be uh, machined aluminum? No, it's just straight up aluminum. There's not a whole lot of recoil on these things, so. No, 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 no. I'm just thinking, uh, like, it'd be a little MP5-esque. Oh, the grippage? Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, by the way, yeah, Warsaw yeah. Patriot says, enough of the damn porn. <laughs> then he, now he says, stop talking about the porn. Okay, <laughs> Warsaw, you're making us talk about the porn. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't, yeah. don't, no, don't, don't say porn. Don't Patriot. say porn anymore, right. anyone. Yeah, no okay. one say porn from now on. Nobody say porn. After okay. this, after this. No one says porn after this. No porn anymore. Don't say it. Stop saying it. You're making me mad. <laughs> so, um, anyway, don't so ever tell me don't say pictures, something. Cause. Like like butthole pictures. <laughs> oh, oh, is, is, that, is that better? Oh dear, it's getting bad. Conversation about that. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so and before I well, before I forget, uh, somebody somebody asked a quick question. Music lover, uh, I can't tell you whether or not I like the five hundred nine or P ten C. Like I wanted to get that because we had been ignoring it for a while. Sorry. Yeah. Now everyone is saying porn in the chat. Okay. Wow. So what's following up? The next thing on our docket is we're building the stock for this little guy. Oh, wait. The, oh nice. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What is that? Oh, HK. HK, HK. HK the HK MP5K. Um, uh, yeah, the SP5K. That thing is solid. I, I, I like the one that I tested. Um, oh, was it an MKE? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I, I thought that was the HK one. No, this is the... Uh, I look closely uh, enough. The Zenith, okay. right? This is correct, the Zenith correct. one? Correct. Yeah. This is a Zenith they're, one. They're, they're all the same. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's supposed to be the closest to a real, an H, a real HK, so... Um, uh, yeah, you know, it, it, that's pretty darn close. The Trilog adapter is sort of right, but anything yeah. else is pretty yeah. darn close. So that's how what, how soon are you gonna have the adapter well, the um the KES stock for that? Let me Cause. show you what let me show you what's going on in the shop today, real quick. If you got a second, um, I think we do. Um, maybe I'll put you here. We've been we're designing stuff now, so. Um, but I have a picture of what it's kind of evolving from. So, kind of like. Let's see. Hold on. I'm gonna lock it on you. Wait. Okay. Can you okay. see it? Yeah. 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 Right there. Okay. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Okay. Oh, so that's okay. Yeah, that's not finished by any means, but um, that's how we're leading, leaning. So. Okay. Uh, uh, why why so much standoff on that uh, the receiver well, extension one of the, part? One of the reasons is a lot of people make a stock, and when they make it so close, you can't shoot it closed. Mm. So you can't. It's so damn close, you can't get in to work it. So, yeah, yeah. No, I can see a, that. Yeah, a little bit further out, you can still work it closed, which. Yeah. It won't actually be that much because on the K it fits right up against that. Well, anyways, you'll see it when it's. But yeah, no, I'd like to see that too because I know there's lots of fans and then there's a bunch of different clones of the, of the I, HK yeah, out there. There's not much choices for the K for a collapsible stock aside from like a side folding choke. And yeah, I got this from an HK dealer that said, "Hey, man, you need to make it. You need to make it." So I'm yeah. gonna make it. No. Yeah. So everyone out there, thumbs up. Thumbs okay. up for this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope Warsaw. I hope you thumbs up this video. You notice I am not saying certain words anymore. <laughs> you know, can I say? This. Can I say butt jiggle? Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I won't say that anymore. So. I don't, what's next? So, here? Yeah. So you know what? Let's uh, let's uh, hit some new stuff. Any gun news out there, you guys? Matt, you got any uh, gun news? Oh, hey. I am. Okay, let's see. Patrick, if you have something, that'll give Matt a chance to pull up something. Sure. I can... uh, well, I mean, I got a new thing. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Get... Somebody's talking. Who's talking? Yeah. Oh. Um, hey, no. what, me and Hank were talking about the Russians have knocked off the uh, Keltec Sub 2000. It's on the fire. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I saw Did anyone see that? Something about that. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty. Uh, is that on? Is that on the yes, former TFB? Yes. Sir. Yeah, I you know I I saw it somewhere on the not TFB. So okay. oh okay. <laughs> oh look at this! They got a Kel they got a Keltec ad running in between in the article. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh man, 
<laughs> uh, you know what? Here's what I wonder about that. I don't know if I don't know if the folks watching this um, saw that, but um, and it does look a lot. Oh, it's a knockoff. It looks a lot like the Sub Two Thousand. Um, you know, it doesn't have like the grip grip texture and everything that the new one has. It looks more, <laughs> I would say, like the Gen One. It's utilitarian. Oh, I wonder Hopefully if it works the better. Same thing. Yeah, it's very close. But uh, what can they do? They can't do anything about it. And what caliber no. is what caliber is it? Um, nine, nine by nineteen. No, oh, okay, nine, okay, it's yeah. full on nine by um, Sure. No. Hey, I, 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 do, shoot, I, do like, I shoot it. I'd I like to see like, how it works. I wish the Keltec had threads on the end of the barrel. Yeah, so that I one's threaded. Them. Yeah. So yeah, I, uh, I, the, you know. tough, tough, Hank. You're not going to get to shoot it. No, we, we don't get these toys. Not with the import yeah. ban, you're not going well, to. And then also, mm -hmm. you know, I've said this before, man. I think George Kelgren is a very, very intelligent, uh, creative dude. So, you know, hey. Next thing we know, like a hundred years from now, the Russians will be claiming they invented the sub two thousand. <laughs> I think Kelgren's one of those guys. I mean, he's. I mean, for all the crap he gets and Keltec gets, and I'm no fan of Keltec, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but George Kelgren was very, very innovative. He's a. He's a very. I mean, he's. He's one of the one of the geniuses in, in the firearms community. Yeah. Yeah. I you think know, he comes up with was, really cool stuff. Yeah. He really does. And and just because Keltec doesn't always execute it quality wise properly like I, I wish they would because they do have some unique designs um doesn't mean that the design itself is not amazing just on everything i mean just going back and looking all the stuff you know that he that he started i mean back in the 80s you know all, all oh, the yeah. different you know when he was preparing for the potential gun bands and he created the first uh, top loading you load with stripper clips little 380 pistol just in case they banned. Oh, I never saw magazine. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, there's actually it's what a little. What is this called? Hold on. What I cannot called? remember the name uh, of it. It's um, but if you look it up, I, ask G Webs. G Webs, okay. he's got a video on it. It's an uh, old. But it looks like a little P380. You know, it's yeah. old school, but it it's top a, loads. It's got no mag well. Right. That's an old concept, actually. Just yeah. if anyone knows what that is, if anyone knows what that gun is, just tell me so I can go search it and look at it. Yeah, I think. Okay, did Kelgren have to, something to do with the Tech Tech Nine? Was it the Tech Nine um, Kelgren worked on? No, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't. I don't know. I don't, maybe he did some of the injection. Patrick is getting attacked right now. <laughs> the what? Oh, Rock Humper says it's the Little Tom. Okay, let me go look this up right now. Oh, and I have a Celtic. <laughs> Patrick is being murdered right now. <laughs> he had to bring me his uh, his uh, Can I tell my Celtic story? Is it from? Yes, go ahead. Tell your Celtic story. Uh, okay, I'll tell your story. Okay, we'll listen. Um, no, I have a sub two thousand, and I bought it in two thousand eleven. It was first gen. Bought it, never worked right. Boom, boom, jam. Boom, boom, jam. No matter what ammo you shot through it, so it sat. I pulled it out. Hank's like, "You need to send it back to Caltech. They'll fix it for you." So I said, "You know what? I'm going to." So before we went to SEMA, I boxed the puppy up. I sent it to Caltech. I got back from SEMA. It was waiting for me. Um, they fixed it. You know, it it works. Um, it works fine now. I, I made a mistake one time when I first got it back of shooting it in the bullet trap without to my shoulder. And if it's not to your shoulder, it doesn't have enough. You can't lip wrist it, so to speak. You know, you have to have pressure against the buttstock for it to cycle correctly. And um, it works now. So they fixed it, no charge. Um, I provided, you know, proof that I was the original owner, and um, it's all good. So. Yeah. Plus well, that's the it. thing that you have to do: return it. I mean, but the other day in the gun store, I saw a guy that was having problems with the PMR thirty. And I think he said he was having feeding issues with PMR 30, which I know probably comes from the magazine. Um, Cause you know, with 22 Magnum, it's so soft, the shell yeah. casing and all that. And like, you can get rim lock and all you kinds gotta of You gotta put them in there happen. correctly. Yeah. You gotta yeah. Them. Yeah. So, and I know people like that gun because it's so lightweight and the guy likes it cause it's so lightweight. And then he was like, Oh, he wants, I think he wants Caltech to give him a new gun and what else <laughs> it gets. I think that, Yes, their things are innovative, and um, and um, part of that is that not everyone realizes that you're you're like a beta tester. Yeah. <laughs> and they also, I'm not, I'm not saying that's right. A, they also have a, a a very clear market share of people that buy a gun that doesn't cost a lot of money, throw it in a drawer, and never use it. 
Like yeah. that is that is a lot of they have two target demographics out there. It's that, and it's people who just like new and innovative things and just want to buy a gun that folds in half or a, a, a double, you know, a, a, a double barrel shotgun with two, you know, or whatever it is. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they 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 those are their two markets basically: in, innovative, yeah. cool, maybe a little bit of a gimmick gun, or people who just are going to buy, you know, a PF nine. And throw it in a drawer and almost never shoot it yeah. to find out that, you know, after 100 rounds, it's going to start having problems. Yeah, and now I and I do know people that have things like the PF9, the P3AT, and they do use it to defend themselves. One thing about Keltec, if you buy a gun from them for the life of that gun, they will they'll take care of it. Yeah, um, it's it's not fun to have to send the gun back to Keltec two three times. That's it was it was actually an easy process. I mean, I didn't. I got online. I. Um, I did it all online. Actually, I didn't even talk to anybody. Yeah, um, I just followed their instructions, and it worked. So. Yeah, it looks like Jacob Chambly is trying to get a uh, Trump rooster patch. He is. Yeah. What's he doing to get it? Yeah, I don't know. He's throwing up a bunch of chickens up there. I'm assuming <laughs> throwing up a bunch of chickens. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which talking of patches, do you guys recognize this patch? The beer. I recognize yeah. this patch. Right you, here. I know how you got that. This you is know. a very. This is a very exclusive patch. You have to be. Yeah. Basically, part of the Bureau of Propaganda. Who knows uh, where this patch comes I from? I do, I do. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that one? Oh. Oh, 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 look, someone else has got the... Oh, we got two butt kissers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. What? Thank you. What? Oh, wait, oh, oh, wait. oh he's a he's, he's, What? He's a, okay, he outranks me. Uh. What? Patrick R outranks me. He went to this is from Brownells. So Patrick, yes. Patrick went to Brownells, obviously, and got like an extra one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I uh, rode the the conveyor belt there in the warehouse. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. So if you go ride the conveyor belt, you get to you get to get that patch. So what um what Caltech stuff have you had, Matt? Uh, well, I've had a PF nine that I got um and immediately it came in, took it straight to the range that was there with my uh you know with my FFL. Went outside every single time I pulled the trigger, the magazine dropped out of the gun. Oh shit! Every <laughs> single time, oh, I would man. literally have to put my hand and hold it all seventies, you know, SWAT like this. You have you video of this? Out. No, I don't. I didn't take oh. my camera that day. Damn it! Um, if you I don't just, have video, it didn't happen. I just went to pick the gun up, and I thought I'm gonna put a few rounds through it real quick because it's a new gun I just got, right? And mm -hmm. nope. Um, so I sent that one back because I just wasn't have, and I even played around with it. I'm even out there, you know. I'm like making sure I'm nowhere near the mag release. You know, I'm holding it in all these weird ways. And every time you pull the trigger, magazine drops out of the bottom. Oh, God. So I sent that one back, and I ended up getting, I don't know what I ended up buying something else. Um, but I do actually, right now, I do own two kel I Oh, I say, I, oh, my really? wife okay. owns one. She has a little uh, old a kel the uh, little uh, 32 mm -hmm. that she has that she likes to keep around. Uh, it was a trade-in from a cop. That I know he carried as a backup gun for many years. It's an old Gen One, and, oh, and he assured he assured me it worked. Right? Okay. Yeah. He assured me it worked, so I trusted that one. She liked she wanted a gun she could beat up and nobody would care about. She knows how anal I am about keeping guns nice and clean and all that, and she knows I don't like Keltec. So she thought, well, I'll just get a Keltec. He's never going to rag on me if I get if I beat up the gun and it gets makeup on it in my purse. So whatever, right? So it worked. That's fine. And I also do. I own a, a Gen Two. Um, sub 2000. Oh, you do? Okay, so how's the Gen 2 for you? How's the Gen 2? Uh, so far, so good. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Now, I haven't put it through heavy use. Um, okay. I've probably only put, I mean, maybe five, 600 rounds through it at the most. You know, huh. it's it, it's a 9 mil, takes Glock mags, um, and, and it's it's been fine. I mean, for, for I, I did not buy it to be a heavy use gun. I bought it to be something I wanted to make sure it would work, have fun at the range, that kind of thing, and then something I could throw on my vehicle if I go on a trip or anything like that. Yeah, like a truck gun kind yeah. of thing. That's that's where you know that's where they get people. Yeah. Which you know, if and it, you get your gun, make sure it works, and if it works for you, and it could do whatever work you think you're going to need to do with it. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, when I bought it, I knew straight up. I'm like, I'm buying a gimmick gun just because I want to buy it for the gimmick. I knew that. I accepted that up front. I didn't think I was buying some high end, you know, uh, carbine or anything like that. So it is what it is, you know. 
Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just a little distracted with uh, by Hope Patrick. So. Yeah. So okay, let's. Uh, <laughs> I got. I, I'm, I got a fierce dog here. Yeah, you know, because like my dog, if you start playing with my dog, your heart will explode before he stops playing with you. <laughs> He's like, uh, oh, is it attack? <laughs> what is that? Oh, that's a bone. Yeah, it's a uh, deer antler. Oh, deer antler. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and Warsaw Patriot, by the way, says, I will never own a Glock. I don't know how we got to that. There's probably some Why? conversation about Glocks. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. Uh, I'm not Why? sure. It must have been something in the chat that he got to. And he says, um, okay, Jacob Chambly says he wants to buy a rooster patch. Uh, Walter, he went to the website and they weren't, and they weren't there. And you know what? I don't have my rooster patch to show it because I actually gave oh. it to Big Daddy Gun. Hang on, hang on. I gave it to Big Daddy. So. Look at this RPK-16. Uh, it's, it's a modified, it's a modified AK. AK. Who keeps asking about it? Warsaw Patriot. Warsaw Patriot. About the RPK-16? I don't know if you guys have seen it. Oh. It's a modernized AK. Yeah. Um, so there goes the, the uh, rooster patch. Do you know about this, Matt? Which one? Go ahead, Walter. The the uh, Trump rooster patch here. Explain that to Matt for me. Um, a couple, three months ago, there was that somebody. Uh, there's a Chinese artist that came up with this design. It's basically a Trump rooster, and then some Americans made an inflatable one and blew it up behind the White House. Inflated. That I remember. Yeah. Yes, I do remember that. I remember and the, the inflatable. And, and, the, yeah. and the Dems tried to make it like it was some big deal, but everybody liked the thing. So as soon as I saw it, I said, I need to make a patch. <laughs> So I did. <laughs> nice. People love it, you know. People. Love like it. It. So, that's it. And you know, while we're showing patches, there's my little uh, my gnome with the keg twelve. We make short little shotguns. So. Ah, okay. So that's where that one came from. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, that's the keg twelve gnome. That was last year at the shot show. Yeah, very nice. Um, that's I just fine. ordered another five hundred of these guys. Oh, so is that why they're not on nice. your website no, right I've now? Got, I, I have them still. I have them still. Okay. So I don't, we, I don't know. I'll have to ask the should people. Should we tell him to like call you up or something? Call Walter at the store. Yeah, you can bust. I'll have to ask my son. But he won't be there till Monday. So yeah, don't do it on the weekend. We're not there. Yeah, yeah and no do it before there, five o'clock in the afternoon too. Have um, you guys seen my assault weapon? The assault weapon. Oh, the, 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 the assault. Yeah, what is that? That's a blood killer. Assault. I've been wanting to pick one of those up. <laughs> this belongs to like a lot of guns that I show on is here. That, is that second gen? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It belongs to Big Daddy Guns. It belongs yeah, there to is Big a Daddy. second gen on the assault gun. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, an assault pistol. Yeah, he says it works really nice. He loves this. He uses this for flies. He has a farm. Is it high capacity? Um, well, you know, here's the here's the thing right here. We oh, okay. salt in it, salt. and see, it actually has it's loaded. So I am I am muzzling you guys with live salt in there. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, fucking cover. Yeah. Oh, hey, um, yeah. Uh, Hank brought so, this up to me. Um, you want to talk about radiation? Oh yeah. Did you did you guys see that? Uh, let me see. Where's that? Where's that article, Walter? I think that was Where on, is uh, that article? Oh, I'm going to put it in the chat again so that Matt and um, and Patrick can see this. This was very interesting. There was radiation found over. I just put it in the chat. Radiation found over Europe. Let me read the article here. It says mysterious radioactive cloud over Europe hints at accident farther east. European authorities are providing new details about a cloud of mysterious radioactive material that appeared over the continent last month, and we're just hearing about it now, because I guess there was Trump news. Monitors in Italy were among first to detect the radioactive isotope ruthium-106 on October 3rd, according to a fresh, uh, French, fresh report by France's Radio Protection and Nuclear Safety Institute. The, um, so based on this, they're saying it comes from somewhere in South Russia, likely between the Volga River and the Ural Mountains. Mm. I love this. Yeah, so there was something went down somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Something, I don't know if someone was testing something or something accidentally was exposed or deliberately. That's the thing. They say it's a very low Russia. level of radioactivity. What was that? If it did something, if something did happen, it's coming out of Russia. They, they don't let anything get out of there. I mean, they yeah. don't, you know, who knows what they're doing over there half the time. 
And that 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 area that's is so vast. Yeah, the spaces they have to work in, you know. Yeah. Dan Nugent says, "Could it be all the way from North Korea?" Uh, that's what I said at first, but I probably I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Rock Humper says Chernobyl too. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and Vanessa Kitty says the the uh, the bug assault is on it is on sale at Costco. She believes. Oh really? They have yeah. a, they have them at Costco. Yeah. Uh, I, that's what she says. I don't know. Um, I don't have Costco. Costco yeah. Surprisingly. So, yeah. I, I mean, live in the. I live in the communist uh, city of Gainesville, so there's no freaking Costco here. Is that Costco, Sam's, it's all the same stuff. Uh, no, no, sir. I beg to differ with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam's Club is not the same as Costco, my friend. Costco, Sam's is, on, Costco Sam's, is on a higher level. <laughs> Sam's is a little more Walmartish. Um, yeah, you know, yes. I mean, it belongs to Walmart, and it's like a little. That's their. That's them trying to keep up. With, but Costco is on another level. They don't, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know. You know. Yeah. I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. Sam's got a lot of cool stuff, though. They have a lot of stuff in there. Well, first of all, the people in Costco are a lot nicer to you. They're better paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, yeah. I was, I, so, I'm, I was looking at uh, news stories. I'm, it's saying uh, that this happened. Back in September on the radiation thing. Oh, yeah. I thought it was was it October? I, I saw October third. Russia. Well, yeah, uh, it's saying it happened back in uh, September in like Russia or Kazakhstan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just another one. Yeah. It just yeah. says they first detected it on October third. So whatever it was, it would have had had to happen before then. Yeah, it says uh, high levels of uh, ruthenium 106, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So uh, are there any mutants yet? That's what uh, I uh, Only that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> your dog. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I wonder how the French wine is going to be. This is going to be a bad <laughs> year, bad vintage. Don't uh, buy that 2017. <laughs> <laughs> It you glows know. in the dark. You don't need. Yeah. <laughs> don't drink it. <laughs> uh, War wine cellar up. Yeah, Warsaw Patriot wants to know what I think about the RPK sixteen. It looks sexy. I don't know if you guys saw it. It's a modernized yeah. AK. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's AK. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's good to go. It's it's a modernized AK. Yeah. Walter says, yeah, it's it looks sexy to me. I mean, I, would I I haven't shot it. I don't know if we're gonna get to see it at Shot Show. Uh, is everyone going to Shot Show? Are you going, Matt? I'm gonna try to make it this year. I've been putting it off for a while, so. But yeah, I, I, I'm I'm gonna see if I can get my my lazy ass up there. Yeah. Um. I hope you know. I hope you got your paperwork going in because they're being in incredibly difficult this year. I just got approved. Okay. Yeah. I just bought my airline tickets. Oh, you did. Oh, nice. Did you get me an airline ticket while you were doing that? You're not that? gonna fly in Southwest again. No. Oh, yes. Do you guys know about Southwest? This Southwest craziness. Any of you guys ever flew on Southwest? I haven't flown on Southwest since the 90s. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if they had this crazy cattle call thing in the 90s, but Jesus. apparently when we flew to Vegas for SEMA, Walter booked the tickets, and I went out there to uh, Tampa and went out with him. We get to the airport. We go through security and everything. We go to Southwest. I'm like, okay, where are we sitting? You don't have seat assignments. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah, they, no, that stuff is maddening. Um, I forget what airline I was flying that did the same thing. It's stupid. Was it Southwest? Because they make you, they have no. this thing where they call people at certain times and then everyone goes on the plane and then you try to find the best seat you can. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, yeah. it's just, it's just group. So if you're, you're in, you know, a, they call A and then they call B and then they call C right. or whatever it is. And then, you know, they each, one like A is 20 people and B is 20 people and C is 20 people or however many it is, much it is depending on that. And so yeah, they call group A first. If you got group A and you, know, you just kind of the, that, that mob of 20 people rushes in to try and get their seats first. Yeah. And then on our flight out to Vegas, there was this uh, woman that got on, I guess she paid, cause if you pay 10 bucks, you can go on first. So she got on first. Then she went, well, so you, you don't have back. to, you don't, you don't have to, um, I don't know how they how they choose where your seat what what group you're in, but I think it's as the first they they get preference over the people that don't. Yeah, so. but she went to the back, so when so we got on like so I don't know somewhere in the middle, and we're trying yeah. to go to the back, and she's like, yeah, well these seats are um, I'm holding these. She had her seat, so and then for two her other friends seats. that were in the C group. 
Yeah. yeah. So she was holding them for her sister. I guess she had like a twin sister and her husband or something. And so everyone that was, it was crazy, man. You know, okay. Uh, I want to say sorry to Lola. I wasn't looking at my text. So I was trying to be uh, nice and I turned the sound off. <laughs> oh, Lola was trying to text she, you? <laughs> she's yelling at me. <laughs> oh, she, okay. Can <laughs> I put that? Nah, yeah. Like, so here's the other thing that I think was in the news that we should talk about Faith Hill and Garth Brooks. You guys hear about this? No. Yeah. Uh, uh, not they're, Garth Brooks, excuse me, Tim McGraw. Yeah, so, they're, they're a couple. Yeah, Faith Hill and Tim McGraw. Faith Hill and Tim McGraw take aim at the NRA and demand gun control. That's from the what? Huffington Post. I, I, no, they've been doing. Tim McGraw's been doing this for years. I'm, that doesn't yeah. surprise me at all. I mean, he, so Tim, oh, Tim, oh, for shame, Tim! For shame. Tim McGraw's. The first time I heard about this was right after Sandy Hook. First time I heard him talking his shit. Yeah. So. But yeah, yeah. He's, they've they've been. I now I've never heard his wife to you know chime in on it or anything like that. But it does not surprise me. Well, I think right now you've got a lot of country singers that are calling for gun control. So fuck those guys. They're beating their they're beating themselves up yeah. because that's crazy. What do country people do? Yeah, they shoot guns. <laughs> they yeah, have Mike, guns. Yeah. They hunt. Yeah, Mike I, I, Mike Bryan says they can suck a cowboy boot. <laughs> but I have to say a lot of quote unquote country western fans live in New York City and Chicago and where do these people these, live? Where are they in LA or something? The urban the urban cowboys so to speak. Yeah. Oh so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nashville. I'm not a country bit. western person, so yeah, you know, that's you know. Yeah, they're all in Nashville. Well you know what? When you go to NRA and even Shot Show in some cases, the celebrities they have come in there oftentimes are these um country music singers. No, you're yeah, I think they should reach out to the hip hop community more. Get some oh, rappers God. up in there. Uh, yeah, that, that, would, that would work real well. The only yeah. endorsed brand would be High Point and Glock. <laughs> and it would be against show rules to hold a Listen, firearm I, anyway I, I, other than this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yo, this gap is it's, it's dope. Yeah. It's I would totally resurrect my hip hop career. Yeah. <laughs> just to. <laughs> Yeah, or maybe I should do like that hip hop uh, country western thing that that some people are doing nowadays. No, just don't. I I, I will drive to Florida and shoot you in the testicle. <laughs> you that is. A gotta, no you just, just got to get hooked up. You just got to find Nelly in Georgia country county line, or whatever the. I think it's yeah. I think it's Florida Georgia line. There, there you right, go. Yeah, yeah. Don't like that. Yeah, but you know the thing is. <laughs> yeah. Look, these real guys, cowboys don't wear underwear. Tyvin says, "Where do you get yeah. that from?" Oh my gosh! I don't know. Who said that, Tyvin? Tyvin yeah. said that. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like uh, what Tyvin would say. I mean, cowboys in Ohio don't wear underwear. Yeah. Oh, God, just ask I, don't know. I feel like maybe Tyvin's watched Brokeback one too many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he's screaming about this AK whatever sixteen thing. Oh. My, I thought we covered RPK the AK sixteen. The RPK sixteen. I thought we covered that. We went over it's, that. I, yeah, I, I just. Yeah. Well, we did, I wasn't paying attention because it doesn't interest me. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's a modernized AK. That's all sprayed with uh, rattle cans. It looks like. Yeah. You um, know what? I, here's what I want to say though about this whole thing with the country music singers and other people that are calling for gun control. I think that places like the NRA, Shot Show, the NSSF. They need to stop giving money and, and supporting those guys at the shows and support people who are really out there fighting for guns every day. I mean, even there's some other celebrities that, you know, make that whole claim of being down with guns or pro Second Amendment and all that. And I don't know if they really are, but support the people who really are. I mean, and there may, and there may be some country singers who really are down with it and, and other celebrities and all that. But we need to make sure that people are down with the thing and then also support guys like us that are every day, you know, out there doing what we're doing right now, you know, and, and, and fighting the fight for the second amendment, man, support us, stop supporting these uh, people who, you know, um, are really like uh, my, my friend uh, Reed said, sunshine Patriots. Sunshine. Yeah. So, um, because you know they they claim to be they I, I think for a long time they claimed that because they thought their demographic was pro gun and maybe now they don't think their demographic is pro gun like Walter's saying you know yeah so now they're really just not worried about it and if yeah. they if their demographic is pro gun if you support all these people and and you're pro gun stop supporting them 
It's it's I always equate it to like a I always say it's like a, a good Catholic that that votes Democrat. How do you vote Democrat when you vote for the abortionist? I mean, how can you be a Catholic and vote for the Catholic Church says you're supposed to go forth and you know have lots of babies and what are you doing? You so it's the same yeah. kind of thing, you know, you're a hypocrite. I, I stopped going to that uh, a while back. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm lots not of people, I, lots of people are hypocrites. Lots of people go against what they say they believe. Right, right. The whole, yeah. like, you know, all the people up in the Northwest that claim to be this, that, and the other, then they vote Democrat. So, yeah, you know, everybody's a hypocrite sometimes. But when you're a hypocrite on a level of, I'm religious, but I vote for the people that want to kill babies, then, right, right. then that's, that's, a, that's a whole other, that's a step in a whole other direction. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a real religious person either. But still, it's it's the same yeah. thing. You know. And somehow it's okay to kill the babies, but not to kill other people. You know. I mean, the babies. The babies are people too. Damn it. It's you know. It's not okay to kill the baby seals or the baby this thing or that oh, yeah, thing. Yeah, you know. But it's okay to kill the actual human babies. Yeah. Well, we don't. Yeah. We don't rape. Right. And sell their body parts, which was another thing I found really bizarre. You got people running around calling people Nazis, and yet these same people support the people that take babies out, cut their parts up, and sell them. That's what the Nazis did. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So did any of you guys see, I don't know, Matt, had, did you find your news thing yet? Uh, no, actually, I was looking around. I was, I, I was checking out Michigan. It looks like uh, Michigan has uh, passed – Quite a few, five new uh, pro-gun reform uh, measures nice. uh, in the Senate, Excellent. which is awesome for Michigan. Pro-gun? Uh, oh, pro-gun. Yeah, pro-gun. Oh, pro -gun. Pro -gun. Sweet. So uh, I got some friends up in Michigan who are no doubt cheering oh, right about now. Yes. Um, <laughs> Michigan, you rock. Yeah. Right well, now. Michigan, go. <laughs> yeah. So it says they've got, let's see, Senate bills. We've got 584, 585, 586, SB 366, and SB 527. Um, let's see, ends the allowance for concealed carry pistol license holders in Michigan to carry openly on school campuses. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so they're, they're, they're getting that uh, pushed through. Let's see, what else do we have? I don't, I'm trying to find the text on all these, or at least a, a summary here. Um, so it's going to allow them, so it says uh, zones were established almost 20 years ago. Courts have ruled that CPL holders can now legally open carry weapons, but not conceal carry weapons. So they're trying to fix that. Hmm. Um, uh, Dan Nugent, Dan Nugent is, says, he says, F Michiganistan. <laughs> I have friends up there that actually like it. I, I don't know. I'm from Texas. That, that, from yeah, Texas. that was funny, though. That was funny. <laughs> I never heard that one before. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, there I are a lot Dan, of uh, Yeah, Dan Nugent is a big supporter of the, ch of the channel. He's always in here. So he's mad at Michigan. But it, this is a good, that's a good thing, right, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, it's, moving. it's something, right? Because Michigan has been one of those states, just from talking to the to people I know up there, that just kind of, I mean, it's kind of pro-gun, but they still have enough laws up there that make people like myself in Texas go, well, I'd never move there. So, yeah. you know, but I guess yeah, it just, just depends. I mean, if you're coming from, there's just certain states out there where you pretty much everywhere else just seems like, ah, it's a step backwards. Um, but oh. I guess if you're from there, it doesn't yeah. seem that bad. So check this out. Big Daddy Hoffman, 1911, is in the chat right now. Oh, shout out! Shout out to you know the OG, the OG Big Daddy Hoffman in the chat. He says, "I need to, I need a TNE &E bug assault weapon." <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I could totally, I could totally do it, Big Daddy. What's the MOA yeah. on that? I mean, he's Big Daddy, weapon. and then these guys are Big Daddy Guns. Big Daddy Guns would love to see Big Daddy Hoffman up at Big Daddy Guns. <laughs> we'll get you all the all the bug assault guns you want. <laughs> Yeah. I guess that, what's the MOA on that thing? You know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So big shout out to Big Daddy Hoffman for hanging out in the chat. Uh, he says, yeah, buddy. Laugh out loud. Okay, so that's very cool. Uh, Buckeye uh, Brian says, meat chicken. That's I guess that's how you're supposed to say Michigan. Meat chicken. Meat, meat chicken. Yeah, well, so. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, let me see. I know there was some other stuff. There was. I know we've been we've been going for for a few hours here. But uh, did you guys see Hera? Do you guys like Hera Arms? Hera, Hera, Not Hera, like Hera. a new California and restricted states offering. You know, Hera Arms makes that like oh, um, yeah, that looks, stock that has that weird V kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, looks like it came out of a movie. 
Yeah. yeah. So they've got some new stuff coming out. I think that's cool. There was yeah. something I wanted to. Oh, here's here's the article. Where is it? Um, this is a this is a good article that I found. American woman faces charges is in Zimbabwe over tweets about Mugabe. <laughs> well, he's a. <laughs> so Martha O'Donovan, a 25 year old American, is facing charges in Zimbabwe over allegations that she tweeted that the country's longtime non agarian president is selfish and sick. O'Donovan, a New Jersey native who works for a satirical news organization, was released on a thousand dollar bail Friday after a judge found that there was a patent absence of facts in the government's case against her Rauda's reports. I hope she got on the first mule she could find and rode the hell out yeah. of there. Now, was yeah, she, she actually was, there? Was she yeah, actually she was there? there? Yeah. She was arrested last Friday and had been held in a maximum security prison until her release. <laughs> <laughs> and she's due back in court on Wednesday, according to the Associated Press. So she's not, out, she's not out of it yet. But I guess she found out that you – that. In other countries, and not quite as free as America. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Rod Mill says, "Babyface, what the heck are you doing?" Okay, Rod. That's not Babyface. This crazy guy right here. Babyface is another crazy guy, and you know, I know, I know. You know, they're white guys, and they have beards, so they probably look alike. But <laughs> <laughs> this one is Patrick Roberts. Patrick right. Roberts. Hi. There he goes, Ed. and he's a, he's a special kind of crazy. We love him. You know, <laughs> he's setting up his sniper rifle right now. What is this gun you're setting up, Patrick? Uh, this is an MPA Curtis Custom build. So oh, okay. uh, it's, yeah, it's a six five Creedmoor in a uh, MPA chassis. It's their BA Classic chassis. Uh, okay, I gotta ask cool this. Gun. I gotta ask this. Would you drop it on the ground? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this one's not mine, so why not? Yeah, why not? Oh, oh, why not? Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so, I, I mean, I do have one similar to this that is mine, um, and I think you guys have seen it before. Yeah. I had to. I had to. I couldn't resist that. I'm sorry. I couldn't. DFT, DF2 dot says, don't pop off in Zimbabwe. She's getting off. She's actually pretty lucky. Yeah, man. you know what? If she got bailed, man, I'd be looking for a way to get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, so. well, yeah. I don't know if she can go to the embassy. Go to the embassy is my advice, and then try to get the hell out of there. Yeah. And, well, uh, and thank the Marines while you're over there. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Along with all the other veterans, which, you know, this is like Veterans Day weekend, you know. To, yeah. Today, some people are off today. Tomorrow's Veterans Day. Obviously, we got the whole weekend. Shout out to the veterans. Do we have? Well, we do actually have a veteran here. There he goes. That was the the, the crazy guy that we were just making oh. fun of. That's a veteran. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I was just yeah. making fun of you. Uh, As Matt said, we are all hypocritical. I'm <laughs> doing a parade tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are you doing tomorrow, Patrick? Uh, shooting. Shooting. There you go. Good thing. I mean, the, you should be doing that every day. Do we have Actually, any? I don't know. I don't know. Are you uh, ever in a... check the, oh. check the match calendar? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, Matt, were you in the armed services? No, no. Yeah. I should have been. I probably would have been a better upstanding human being today, but uh, at that age, I was just a little too worried about partying and getting laid. Well. Well, you know, that there's there's nothing wrong with that. Right? To be honest with you, that's still that's just as American as apple pie. A lot of people go in the military and do the same thing. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't really work out like that for everyone. Well, I mean, you <laughs> not know, really fun. Yeah, that's what your job is, I guess. So. Yeah, absolutely not. No. So, okay. Um, what 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 Lola's trying to tell me? She, okay, Lola wants to say thank you for your bravery and courage. That allows us all our freedom. Absolutely, thank everyone. You know, um, you oh, know. Today's seems, also today's also the Marine Corps the, the Marine Corps birthday today. Yeah, absolutely. So happy birthday to all those crazy Marine dudes out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, first in and yeah. last out nine times out of ten. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Did anyone else have anything else that they wanted to talk about that we didn't cover before we go into the wrap up here? You know. Um, I'm looking no, I'm to see good. what else is going on. Yeah. I gotta go see if there's some more Chinese leftovers. Yeah. Oh, okay. So let's um 
you know, let's go down the line here. Uh, Matt, any other stuff you wanted to say? Definitely, I want to encourage everyone to subscribe to Never Enough Ammo. But what, what other stuff do you have going on, Matt? You know, I mean, it's, it's not much. It's the same thing. I do the podcast a couple of times a week and, and, you know, come on over and hang out. Anybody that wants to. And, of course, anybody on here in the room, you ever, ever want to hop on one of the podcasts, just let me know. Okay. I'll shoot you a link. So okay. we're pretty open there as far as getting people in. It's uh, pretty much anybody, anybody and everybody's welcome on the podcast. And we like to sit around and just talk about what's going on. But, uh, I mean, really, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. We all uh, do go hook up over on gun channels, which, of course, is uh, uh, what uh, Gun Website started, which is just kind of a cool place to go and hang out, it's a bunch of gun people, and that's where we all share links with each other to get in all the different podcasts. And they, I think he's even got the schedule set up over there. You can see any time of day what podcast is running on okay, his cool. channel. We should, all, kind of we should all go over there at some point. Um, and you know, I know I've been promising I would wind up over there on gun channels. We should all do it, you know. I can't get the site to load, but it's, uh, you know, probably my computer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. <laughs> no, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. That's what I'm up to. So, and, uh, okay. you know, just trying to get out there and make videos and do podcasts, have some fun, try and fight for fight for some rights once in a while, you know, try to make our voices heard a little bit. Too many people out there want to try and strip some stuff away from us so. absolutely yes and uh, you know thank you for coming on we really appreciate that you came on and uh you know i think you were very straight up and and honest about everything we really appreciate that here you know it doesn't happen all the time yeah you know i got nothing to lie about so people gonna yeah. like me or they're not yeah and you're you're always <laughs> welcome to come on here man if you've got some things you know some things you want to talk about promote and all that kind of good stuff you can, you know, you can jump in, you can come for the whole time, whatever you want to do. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. Uh, let me just say here, uh, V Lashard 2 gave us two bucks to say. Vlark Shard. Vlark Shard. There you go. Yeah. Vlark Shard 2. Vlark coconut on donuts. Yes. Yeah, he's yeah. a, he knows that I hate coconuts on donuts. So that's why he's saying that. <laughs> oh, you don't like coconut? Uh, like I hate coconut. I hate coconut, period. But especially when it ruins a perfectly good donut. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's, you know. You don't like the coconut? Because I like that. I can't stand coconut. Oh, it, okay. it, it just, it, it has the texture of little shards of cardboard. I just, I can't. Oh, okay. And my wife doesn't like it either. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't I understand. You guys got to get the, you have to get like the fresh <laughs> coconut, you know, from right off the tree, the from the Yeah. <laughs> the you know, hey, I'm from the Caribbean, so I enjoy, I enjoy. Palm tree jackets. Yeah, palm yeah, tree, yeah, tree yeah, jackets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I do, I, and I have climbed up a few palm trees in my life. <laughs> you know, I always used to ask my mom where she came from because, you know, my mom's Indian. So it was always like, and and um, when we left Guyana, I was like five years old. So she always looked different from everyone else. And I was like, mom, where did you, where'd you come from? She said, I fell off a coconut tree. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, all right. So. You know, like I was saying, man, <laughs> thanks for coming on, man. We really appreciate it. You're also welcome to come on here anytime. You know, let us know if there's anything we could do or if you just want to come on, hang out, or promote something, okay? Yeah. We appreciate it. And tell Yankee Marshall to bring his butt to come on here and, you know, <laughs> let's do it. Let Come on and talk with the peoples. You know, we're not that bad, right? We, we you know, was it horrible? No. How was it? no but see, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. I understand. I I, I've spoken to Yankee Marshall one time. We've been trying to get him to come on the show for a while, but uh, we have yet to see him. So I don't want to have to start making fuck you videos in order to get oh, him. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think he would. I'm not going to do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe publicly calling him out. For yeah. Something. Uh, no, no. no. Like, no. I'll let I'll let other people do that. I'm not like yeah. the, uh, the... No, I, it doesn't have to be you know yeah. calling him up or something that's means anything just something dumb oh okay he, yeah something he might just know what to. you need to do make a video saying kiapa rhinos suck and they're the <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll get them going. well actually you know what i've asked yankee marshall to come on and talk about caltech i think we'll have a really good caltech conversation oh yeah he hates caltech yeah you know uh, he's never owned <laughs> oh, any oh he's never owned any caltechs but you know the hate I think is strong it's, with you young oh, yeah, yeah you know i think it'll be a good conversation i really do i'm not trying to you know cause anything rod mills gave us a buck gave us a dollar I, I you know that's for the coconuts he didn't put a reason in there but yeah i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna use that to buy one of those coconut waters what's the brand of coconut oh, water dear, no like? more coconut water come on now i forgot now the brand there's a brand of <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Night Strike One says, I need to tell Yankee Marshall his Beretta. You know what? I actually ran into Yankee Marshall at SHOT Show a couple years ago, and we talked so long that Lola got pissed off. <laughs> we, we were just standing in the middle of the, it was like three hours. We were just talking about a whole bunch of stuff. So, and he has done, and he's done some things that I like and all that. And have said, Hey, you know, I like this. And, and he says he's going to come on the show, but we can't actually get him to come on. But you know, there's a long list of dudes like that. So, you know, I know you're not responsible for that, Matt. I just figured out, you know, well, that it. maybe he'll watch I, this cause you're on tonight. Yeah, I will throw it out there that that I I I, I did uh, I did find you uh, Yankee on YouTube back when he didn't know that people could subscribe to his channel. Mm -hmm. He would just post stuff, videos on YouTube to then take them and put them on the forums. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize people were actually watching his videos on YouTube. He thought yeah. people were watching him when he would post them in the forums. Yeah, and then I, and then I and then I gave him a shout out and told people to go check his channel out. So I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, you, know, it's not, you it's should it's not. kind of be a little bit. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, Mac, military arms channel. He tells me that he, um, you know, he's known Yankee Marshall. Oh, yeah. They, they were forum years. guys. They were, they yeah. were both forum guys. Yeah, they used to fight in the forums. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently, years. Mac used to tell Yankee uh, about, you know, that he should get on YouTube, and I guess you, Yankee would just blow it off and not think he didn't think YouTube was a thing. When I first met him, he did not understand subscriptions comments any of that stuff he didn't oh he, he didn't. understands it now man oh, he does now yeah he's a master now so um at, speaking of masters big daddy hoffman says see you at shot show 2018 god willing we hope to see you out there you know i look forward to that big daddy hoffman yeah, really cool dude yeah, yeah and patrick's gonna be there matt uh gotta come by the gotta come by the safety harbor tables 20613 in law enforcement Over. yeah all you guys go visit safety harbor firearms it's a good booth i go i go like leave all my stuff over there so i'm like i take all my stuff leave it over there that's a mothership yeah the killers watch my stuff very di diligently you know and then i go back there and they feed me and all that kind of stuff so it's, it's yeah yeah i do the same thing with uh brownells and excess yeah and cz in yeah. like 16 other companies <laughs> yeah well i used to do that with caltech and then they then they started yeah you, you, know. you got put and they the got mad at me so yeah i'm not allowed over there anymore the redhead black boys yeah. so okay lola yeah lola's <laughs> telling me don't start trouble again okay so <laughs> here we go patrick what do you want to what do you want to um remind everyone about there? I, I just go subscribe to firearm rack do do that thing please absolutely yeah and so somebody, I, somebody out there who's got some uh, graphic uh knowledge uh, come up with a, a nice uh, logo for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Let's get a <laughs> let's get a nice logo for Patrick. Or, 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 or I just no thought of days. something, but yeah, I'm fine. The, yeah the, I think it should have the the firearm rack thing. Obviously, it should have some titties in it, and then it should also have Patrick all in one thing. So, like maybe it's his face, but it's got titties, and there's a firearm <laughs> rack right there. How about that? Uh, no, uh, yeah, no. Uh, just, just, just a Caltech <laughs> shove between two titties. <laughs> pause. No? It was a long pause. Okay, we're gonna get in trouble with Warsaw again. So let, let's. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't care about that. Uh, yeah. No, there there were a couple of questions I saw scroll through. Oh, that I, you you guys talk like like a like ladies or something. Uh, somebody asked about the twenty two forty five Glock nineteen grip that. Probably not going to come to fruition. Um, and then somebody asked for the Bergara HMR update. I, I, I sent that gun back because, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a thousand dollar kind of whatever gun. Yeah. So while you're on here, we people were talking earlier before we started about the Hudson 9. The Hudson 9, everyone, ha are you getting one? Because I guess I'm the. I'm yeah, the I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I haven't heard from the people at Hudson. So uh -huh. get on their Instagram and send them a direct message. Tell them to send one over to Firearm Rack with some ammo, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. That will be good. Um, there are some videos coming out. I think Mac has a video coming out. If it's yep. not already out, it's coming out soon. Uh, his first shots video is up already. It is. Okay, there you go. Yep. So any for everyone who wants to see stuff about the Hudson H9, go to Mac. Mac's got some good stuff. Um, I doubt that we'll be getting one. I, I have tried. You know, That's about all we can do here. We can try to get them. So there you go. We 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 try. So what what's so funny, Walter? What do you 
<laughs> just reading the comments. Sorry. Oh, what cracked you up? <laughs> no, you got to read it. I'm not going to repeat it. This time is back to something. Oh, time is still going in. <laughs> Patrick going was in. the sex stunt <laughs> double for the sex sense for Broke Back Mountain. What the <laughs> shit does that mean, bro? I don't, I don't English. Know. Come on. <laughs> Simon, you're bad. Lola, okay, Lola's getting mad. Lola's getting mad. You now. gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. Yeah. Listen, you know what? Okay, I'll tell you what happens in all fairness. Uh, whenever Patrick's on here, it's usually Walter and then the other Patrick. They go into the comments and then they troll Patrick Roberts. I was okay. good tonight. I didn't do yeah. anything. And even though Tyvin and, and this Patrick have the same last name, Tyvin wants to hate on him. <laughs> yeah, I don't you understand. Know. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so Robert Lafrug gave us ten bucks, and he said, "Stopped over and picked up an AR lower from Safety Harbor Firearms a few weeks ago. It's uh, very clean and professional looking, without any giant goofy looking logos. Building a Mark 18 on it next week." Thank you very nice. much. Nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mark 18 yeah. is something. Uh, Mark. Robert, what what uh, variant of the Mark 18? I need to know. And uh, I need more coffee. I haven't had enough today. I'm very, very tired. Yeah. Okay. Patrick, um, Patrick, um, or Babyface Patrick built a Mark 18, didn't he? Thank yes, you. he did. I think so. Yes, he built that. He, the, um, I gave him, I gave him one from STD. I gave him an STD. <laughs> I'm not even going to say. Yeah, I gave him an STD 15. STD is actually a company, Standard Manufacturing, and they call their, their rifle the STD 15. <laughs> And I gave him an STD, baby face. <laughs> so, yes, I believe he's converted it into a Mark 18. So we'll get him to show it. Yeah. I think he's shown it before. Uh, Mike Ryan says, uh, H9 and Maxim 9 both did not interest me until they came out, and now I'm really interested in both. Uh, you know, and so, okay, L uh, Walter, talk about your stuff because Lola's oh. me. Well, the new stuff. We're, we're too rowdy for Lola right now. Okay, sorry, Lola. We'll get out of here. Robert um, Lafrugue, by the way, hold on. Robert Lafrugue says uh, Daniel Defense Mod 1. Okay. He, he already okay. has the upper. Mod 1. Yeah. Go ahead, Walter. CZ Evo Scorpion, new stock. Just came out today. Going to start making them. Buy one. $199. Yeah. It's going to be on sale until we run out of those $199. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Working on MP5 stock or MP5K. That's coming. Facebook, Instagram. Stay tuned. There's more coming. Okay, cool. All right, yeah. Oh, and, you know, and I will beg Patreon, but I've only got one dollar so far, so it's not something yeah, to beg about. Yeah. Well, I thought we gave you we, we gave you a dollar, didn't? Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I thank well, you very much. You, yeah. you should be up to two bucks. We're we gonna we're gonna, we're gonna work on all that Patreon stuff too. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's all so that Walter can start developing some uh some guns, some open source stuff here. Yeah, so, make some new stuff. Know. Yeah, more new stuff. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Open source, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. love to hear more about that. Yeah, we didn't really get nerd out too much this time. Yeah, no, we'll we'll yeah, we'll we'll work on that the next yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so here's um here's who I want to thank. I want to thank everyone in the chat, everyone that's hanging out with us, all the folks that support us on Patreon, we're Patreon slash Hank Strange. Uh, we really appreciate that. Everyone that sponsors us, that would be Safety Harbor Firearms right there. That guy Walter, you know, ran CLP that we spoke about earlier. <laughs> um, Andrew's Custom Leather, of course, Big Daddy Guns right there. Big Daddy big Guns, daddy. big shout out to them. Also, I want to announce this is I'm going to announce this to you guys since you're you oh. know, you're all my friends. Somebody is coming on and sponsoring us with ammo, fancy brass company. Yeah, oh, they, I like that. Yeah, this is 220 yeah. grain right there, 300 blackout. So I am gonna be I'm gonna be testing all this stuff and uh, you know we'll be shooting it and doing videos. And we're yeah. gonna have the owner Blue from Fancy Brass here on the show a couple of times. Talk to you guys. We gotta so, run. We gotta run some of that to the Sig Rattler. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, we're gonna shoot the living daylights out yeah, of this, oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. stuff, man. I got some. Oh, okay. okay. So, is it? Just brass, or they do loaded ammo? No, they it's the whole here. thing. If you take a look at this, it comes in this uh, blister pack here. So yeah, man, that's okay. like actually. I met right the guy out. that makes those. Those are cool. cool yeah, blister. blue. You met blue. Really good guy. Um, blister pack. No, 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 no. The dude that makes the the, the packaging. Oh, the packaging. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's actually really cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. We're gonna we're gonna get to talk with them and and and. Um, do some other things with them. So uh, don't forget, on Tuesday, it's going to be Mark Krebs. 
Okay, we're gonna do another. We've been doing some AK uh, episodes, so we're gonna do the ultimate AK episode. It's gonna be Mark Krebs and Jim, Jim Fuller. Right it's gonna be right epic. Nice. It's An gonna epic be epic. Show. Absolutely, awesome. and Walter's going to be awesome. there. Yeah, yeah, so really you guys, yeah. everyone should join us. Uh, we'll put up some stuff about it. All you guys should share that. That's going to be amazing. Okay, it's going to be a lot of AK talk going on. I invite I invite you guys to come hang out with us. You know, in the chat and all that kind of stuff, and uh, you know, submit your questions and all that. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Lola wants me to say finally, uh, Happy Veterans Day, and yeah. you know, because freedom ain't free. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, you know, my uh, I was born in Guyana, right? I was born in Guyana, and uh, my my parents. I left there when I was five, but my parents, you know, they were obviously born there and they grew up there. And one of my dad's cousins, they, they were really they were related. They were really good friends. Um, he really loved America, wanted to come to America so bad that during the Vietnam War, he is one of those guys that came over to America and joined up. And went out to Vietnam and it really messed him up. He was like an awesome dude, you know. So, I mean, it's a tough thing. And and that's like, you know, even like thinking about it, it makes me kind of sad to see what it did to such a nice guy. Because he was real tiny and, and so they would give him a knife and put him in those like tunnels and all that kind of stuff to go after people. In tunnel rat. All right. Yeah. So it really, really messed him up. And he was such a sweet guy. So, you know, people pay a price so that we could be free. Yeah. That's what I, I want am, to say. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. So there you go. All right, everyone. See you on Monday. Peace out. We're out Have a good weekend. See you. Bye.